one of my favorite pieces of the show. Yeah, you know what? This is this is the showpiece of the show for the drivers. They get to come out um, on on the back of a motorcycle. It's also the safest part of the show for the drivers because they can't they don't really drive their own cars. They can't really <laughs> crash into things. Also, they're not driving their own cars as they are sitting on the back of the Harley Davidsons provided by the Polish Harley Davidson Owners Club. They're out here, you can see Greg Orshipke there as he waves to the crowd uh, on the back of a Harley Davidson, incredible car, uh, cars, and now incredible motorbikes on track, but plenty of sirens and everything else in between. And as they roll onto the track, this is an amazing moment. And look at the diversity of drivers, machinery, and nations here on display. 16 drivers remain from a possible 20, 20 uh, nations. And I think right now we're looking at the Polish we were just mentioning, now taking a real jump at the Nations Cup as only one Irish driver remained. They were the top two countries at the moment. So the Polish in their hometown right now looking very strong. As you can see Ahmed Daham there from Jordan rolling by. He is looking to make his name in the European drift scene. He's done a good job so far. Adam Zalewski, last year's Drift Masters European champion, but he's on form too. As you can see Pavel Korpelinski now with the lights on and the car a bit battered and bruised, but he's looking consistent all year. He's definitely going to be one to watch as we move through the order. You can see the flares that go off in the middle of the arena. There's Pyro now being turned on. Andreas Vasilyowskis is ready. The Lithuanian driver with no front bumper because he's hit just about everything. Another local hero, Pavel Trella, ready to go into action as they come down on the back of another Harley Davidson. And this place has just turned into Party Central. There's Pyro, there's Flames, there's Sparks, there's CO2, CO2 cannons. CO2 cannons. Yeah, I mean, we've got it all going on right now, Dave. Right now, I'm not too sure what's going on right now, <laughs> but there's explosions everywhere. There's cars on track, there's drivers on motorbikes. This is the spectacle that you can expect from the Driftmasters European Championship as now the two of our Red Bull Drift brothers, Ellie and Joe Hutunji, are ready to do battle in the top 16. They've had a good laugh, I'm sure, behind the scenes, saying this is a little bit early that we wanted to meet, but it's going to put on a show for the fans. And look at this, CO2 cannons, lasers, lights, motorbikes. What more could you ask for from an event? And this is the showpiece of the year. There's Tor Arne Kabir. Eerily, eerily coming through the smoke there, ready to lay the sledgehammer down on anybody he comes up against. And this is just a crazy place right now. All of a sudden, uh, you know what, normal proceedings have just gone to a standstill. We're here <laughs> for the show. We've been building up to this all week, five days of late tarmac in this stadium. And now it looks like we've got thousands in the stands, ready to go and ready to cheer on their favorite driver. I'm looking forward to this evening. Incredible. There's Evo Cerulis waving to the fans as he comes through. Another driver we've been picking all weekend. And look at this. I mean, Ahmed Daham is going, what in the name of God is happening right now? I'm waving on the back of a Harley Davidson or a Goldwing maybe motorcycle as we wave at the fans around the circuit. And this entire place has just turned yellow behind us with those flares that off in the middle of the circuit. Incredible scenes here in Poland. What a championship, what a night to be a drift fan. Well, listen, this just goes to show to show you the show that we are putting on for you guys uh, watching and in attendance here, uh, uh, touring in Poland. And you know what? These guys that have put everything on the line, including their cars, their bodies, and um, everything they own uh, for you guys to put on a show. They made it through to the top 16, and this is one way to kick it off in style, and that is by bringing those guys out in front of you and showing off their machinery. Like we say, we've got a stacked grid in top 16, and uh, you well, know what? I, I, you know it, what? It's, for me, it's very, I sat here a minute ago and I looked through the paperwork and I thought, this is so unpredictable right now. So unpredictable. I would yeah, not we've like got to be some big one of those. I mean, you can take a relaxed moment now while you celebrate in front of the fans, but it's not relaxed for these guys. 16 guys, a lot of crashes, a lot of carnage. The risk levels are so, so high right now on that circuit. And from where I'm sitting right now, I'm just looking forward to the show. Ian, it's bringing me back to that round one five where yeah. we got a little emotional. We Very lost the run of ourselves. <laughs> I can see that happening again tonight. Uh, if you're at home, we want you to just do one favor for us. We're going to put our heart and soul into this like we've done at every event this year. We just want one thing from you guys watching in from home. Hit that share button. Get it out to as many people as possible. Let all your friends and your family know that it's about to go down in Poland as 20 nations go to war for the biggest prize in European drifting, that number one position in the Driftmasters European Championship. So we are ready to send guys to that track very, very shortly. And Tor Arne can be in there. You can see him pumped up and excited as his mechanic drives his absolute battered and bruised V8 powered one ASX around the track. This place is just a wash with sound, noise, and explosions right now, and I'm looking forward to see what goes down next. Yeah, exactly, and what goes down next uh, will be um, a battle that could ultimately decide 
how the rest of the season plays out. We've seen some big players in the championship already knocked out of the game. Bartosz Stalowski knocked out in top 32. Connor Shanahan knocked himself out in top 32, leaving Dregor Hipke and James Dean at the top of the order. Like I said to Ryan Sage, at the top of the order to play with the championship. It's kind of like now they're running away with it. But we've seen a James Dean that's not in form. Shook his head when he got out of the car after winning the, the battle with Bartosz Stalowski. He now takes on a very confident and a very on form Juha Boitelaxko. Good point to let's go upset the apple cart and take James Dean out of competition in top 16. It is and be, uh, not beyond the realm of possibility right now. This is what I'm saying, you know, we've seen a lot of stuff today already. We've seen a lot of stuff this weekend. We've seen a lot of top players uh, put their cars in the wall and make slight mistakes. We see Jack Shanahan put one wheel wrong, knock himself out of competition. Um, would I be right in saying that we did not see James Dean's car on the parade right there? Would that be telling a story of how much work is being done behind the scenes on that car? Just noticing I did not see the teal and blue uh, S14 out there. Have you guys watching it at home? My name is Dave Egan. This is Ian Waddington. We're going to talk you through all of the action for the rest of this event. We're as pumped up as anybody here <laughs> in this arena to Very get the action up. underway. We've been at this since Friday morning, and it just is rising and rising in terms of tension and anticipation ahead of this, the top 16, the main event, the most exciting part of the show. If you're at home right now, well, if you're watching on, why not get a couple of your friends around to watch it online as well. Hit the share button, hit that like button. Let us know you're enjoying the action. We want to get this out across the world because your favorite country, if it's involved in the game today, let us know also. For your favorite driver, make sure you're interacting as much as you can on all of those uh, social channels. Make sure you throw those comments down. Let us know what you think of the action as it unfolds tonight. Right now, though, there's been an awful lot of crashes, spills, thrills, unpredictable battles, underdogs coming through. Expect that to be the way it goes for the next hour, an hour and a half at the top 16. It is ready for go time here in Torin and Poland in the Motor Arena, a custom Speedway Stadium, 17,000 seater. You know, we just put some tarmac down, just, just made our own track for two days, and tomorrow they go rip this whole place down. So I think the only people that are really going to rip this place down are these 16 drivers here. Yeah, they're going to go head to head, and we've seen some already some very, very close call battles. We've seen these guys putting everything on the line in top 32. That's just top 32. That's not the final, and some of those battles were door and door, like we would expect to see in a final. So what we're going to see now, well, I don't know. <laughs> I expect some serious action. But the first battle of the evening, the first battle of order, will be again your full Formula D current champion, your multiple Euro, uh, European champion, James Dean, take on a very confident Juha Poitelaxo. But like you mentioned, Dave, Above we it. haven't seen James Dean on the parade. Yes. So are there issues still still present with James Dean's car? Apparently, we call him the machine. Apparently, he was seeing an error code <laughs> in his own eyes earlier on. So they were rebooting the system. They were Sounds up, they, right. They were updating, and they're hoping to get him plugged back into the car <laughs> and ready to go. So from my perspective right now, if you're joining us for the first time this evening, we got to know, tell you how it works. So drifting, very different sport to anything else you might have watched in the past. It's not about the first guy across the line. It's not a race. Essentially, it's judged on criteria, style, angle, and speed. So I'll be getting that car sideways, keeping it sideways. And if you're in a chase position in a battle, getting as close to your opponent as possible and not making contact. How does the criteria work? Well, we're going to tell you right now. So the criteria that's involved here in the Driftmasters Championship uh, is going to be pretty simple. Battles are scored on lead cars line and chase cars proximity. Battles are scored on a 5-5 basis in conjunction with comparing lead to lead and chase to chase. There are no five-minute rules and there's a maximum of one one more time per battle, after which the judges must make a decision. The judges cannot come to a decision in the one more time battle. A decision can be based on both combined runs. In the event of two incomplete runs in a one more time battle, judges will fall back to who qualified highest. There are two possible initiation procedures single file or side by side. In single file, the chase driver chooses to initiate behind the lead driver. In side by side, the chase driver chooses to initiate immediately beside the lead driver within the full width of the chase vehicle lane. The lead car goals, which is the car that's going to be leading them out in first position, well, he's going to run the qualifying line, run a 100-point qualifying run, if possible, run a chaseable lead run, and follow the acceleration and deceleration map. And also chase driver goes. This is the guy in the, in the chase position who's trying to chase him down, initiate no later than the lead driver, maintain close proximity to the lead driver, match or better the lead driver's angle, and mimic the lead driver's transitions and line throughout the course. Hitting a cone does not necessarily constitute a points deduction. Drivers will score a zero for spinning out, stopping drifting, two wheels off, prolonged straightening or understeer, an inactive chase, an illegal pass or overtake, getting legally passed or overtaken, 
opposite drift, drifting with opposite angle for that position on the course, or a hood, hatch, trunk, or doors opening during a run. Straightening, stopping drifting, or understeer will result in points being deducted throughout the duration of the straightener or the understeer, depending on the severity. Zero will be scored for prolonged straightening or understeer. Now, before we kick off the action right now, I'm going to hand you over to, to Kevin O'Connell. And Kevin, if you're there, uh, we are just going to talk to you a little bit about what you've been watching so far. Give us your opinion on the track. Now, obviously, you guys are making decisions here, and they've been tough tonight. What's made the things really tough for you tonight? What's been the criteria that you would play, are placing on these guys, and what do you expect to be seeing for the next two hours? Yeah, Dave, so basically, the biggest mistake, one of the biggest mistakes that we've been seeing is the lead driver not, not uh, sticking to that qualifying line that we've really been looking for. So there might be a little bit shallow on outer zone one, uh, where we really wanted them to see them really uh, sitting the rear of the car on, uh, on the, those tyre bills. We then want them to come in nice and tight into our inner, inner zone one, which most drivers are getting, and then a nice smooth transition back onto inner zone two. Where we're seeing a lot of mistakes is, uh, is drivers not getting deep into outer zone too early and then also not leaving outer zone too early enough as well and getting out too wide close to the, in the center section, uh, getting out too early and then having to do a long drag of the handbrake then to get back into the touch and go and again not maintaining that nice wide outside line for outer zone 3. But most of the mistakes are from the chase driver, unfortunately. They're making massive dives just to get on the, on the lead driver's door, which we really don't like to see, especially coming into outer zone one. They're diving up on the inside when they should be uh, starting behind the, the lead driver and then tucking in beside their door, their door all the way around outer zone one. And also a lot, a lot of drivers trying to um, make a dive into outer zone two, where we really want to see them uh, get out onto that outer line nice and early and maintain that outer outside line, mimicking the, the lead driver's qualifying line. Also, another place where we're seeing uh, big dives is coming into that touch and go as well. Chase drivers really not uh, sticking to that qualifying line, trying to get up on the inside and then making a big mistake. And once you go on the inside and miss that touch and go, it's almost it's near impossible to get back out, out onto that wide line to get into outer zone three and over the finish line. Well, thanks, Kev. It's nice to hear that from the judges, though. Their criteria and what they're not only judging on, but what's causing difficulty for yeah. some of these guys to get through. Now, here's another thing. We sort of look for that perfect one, but it's very hard in the real world to see perfect runs. Well, now, due to the beauty of virtual uh, simulator driving, we are able to see what a perfect lead and chase run looks like. We're going to check that out right now, Ian. But what the judges would say is a perfect lead and chase run. If you're new to drifting, it's going to give you a good idea of what to expect later on when these guys get on track. So as you can see, the lead driver, well, they come off the start line, and then it's the lead driver initiating first, initiating you know, breaking rear wheel traction and staying wide to that outer zone. Look how close the chase driver is expected to be in and then it's these inner zones. One there, and then a transition onto another inner zone, those white boxes on the ground. Then the chase driver stays back on it as the lead driver tries to attempt to run the rear end of his car right to the outer zone, all the way around outer zone two. And as they come through the center section, this is where the speed starts to pick up. They break into this deceleration zone, and again, it's supposed to be out onto the touch and go and outer zone three with the chase car mirroring it perfectly the whole way around the circuit. A pretty difficult and dangerous track, and if you're just joining us, we have had the majority of our cars hit the wall pretty hard. We've had over five or six national champions eliminated with essentially poor decision-making and going into those concrete walls. So it's certainly been exciting, and we expect it to be for the rest of the night. Now, if you're joining us and you're kind of unsure of what this championship is all about and why we run these dangerous layouts, well, here's a good example. Because two weeks ago, we were in Riga and Lafia, and we created one of the craziest drift events in the entire world. If you missed it, well, here's a catch-up. Check this out. Riga. The Driftmasters European Championship touched down in the beautiful Latvian city for the most dangerous and highly anticipated event of the tour. This track takes no prisoners and only rewards the brave. Drivers knew there was no point in showing up if they weren't prepared to throw down. Before the on-track competition began, locals were treated to a sight that few could comprehend, the street parade. We're in the middle of freaking Riga. Police shut the whole place down for like a bunch of 60, 70, crazy thousand horsepower drift cars. Come on now, how much better can it get? And the weather's good as well, so it's Riga, baby.
have to stay focused and our commitment definitely will win the race. This track really requires a, a high concentration and a lot of commitment and then I would say balls. Welcome to Lafia and welcome to Riga and welcome to the most hardcore drift event of the year. After an insane start to the season in Płock in Poland and then a very unpredictable event in Hungary, the Driftmasters European Championship is ready to once again stake its claim that it has become the Champions League of European Drifting. on cue, unpredictable weather conditions would make the circuit even more challenging and treacherous. The best in the business would have to prove their ability and adaptability once again. It was time to hit and hope at over 90 miles an hour. And he is right there with Sebastian Fonte, not an inch between the cars. But even torrential downpours couldn't stop the knife edge action as each driver threw caution to the wind. for a third step on the podium, leaving us with one final battle remaining. Gregor Szybki, the winner in Hungary, had championship point leader James Dean firmly in his sights. With so much anticipation resting on this event, the final would have to be something truly special. It certainly didn't disappoint. He doesn't seem to have the pace for James After three grueling rounds of action, record attendances and unrivaled online viewership, 
The Driftmasters European Championship is certainly cementing its initial claims as the Champions League of European Drifting. As we head to round four, we ask one question to every Drift fan worldwide. Can you really miss what happens next? Well, that was the story from Riga in Latvia just two weeks ago, and this is the story we're creating right now in Poland. Ryan Sage, we've just seen a gruelling top 32 action. Um, what are you making of it so far? Now we've finally got through our top 32 and we've cemented our top 16 drivers together. Well, every event seems to be living up to a type all the way up until now, and uh, we're, we're seeing it continue to escalate. I think the, the fans are definitely getting what they're paying for. The fans online are seeing a tremendous show. And this event has really, in my mind, been all about, can you handle the attrition? Can you make it through and still succeed, do the things that the judges are looking for? We saw some incredible crashes, guys that, that really were pushing super hard because they needed to, but just a little bit too hard. Uh, we had that really close call with, um, with uh, Shanahan and um, Romanowski and I thought the judges made a really good call there but unfortunately Romanowski is not going to be able to make it to the line is, is what I hear so that means an automatic buy uh, for the competitor I think that's uh Przegonski? Yeah, Przegonski. Przegonski. So, <laughs> so yeah, I mean, it's it's been amazing to watch and, um, you know, a, a, a ton of great contenders here and just really looking forward to the top 16. Yeah, top 16, we've built this up now and uh, this is where the show really starts to get to turned on. Uh, you know, the crowd here are getting hyped. You see the fireworks, we get the lights on. And uh, yeah, like you say, it, it, very grueling uh, for our judges in that top three too. Not an easy to make some of those decisions, especially like you pointed out, the Jack Shanahan and the Romanowski battle. That yeah. was, um, I mean, like I said, a one-off. It's very, very um, rare that you see a decision like that have to be made. Well, I mean, the interesting thing that I, I've seen from the drivers so far is that even with all the guys that are going either into the hard walls or the tire wall, they're still pushing. It's not holding them back. They still want to make it to that final battle at the end of the night. And now with the lights going down and track conditions probably changing, drivers are going to have to make adjustments, maybe make some, some changes to their setup and try to anticipate what their competitor is going to do in this round of 16. Exactly. And uh, we talk about top 16. Uh, James Dean, we've, we, we know he's got car problems at the moment. And we found out just minutes ago that he's actually waiting on parts to be delivered to the circuit wow. to repair his car to make it <laughs> top 16 so these guys you know like you say they're going above and beyond not only on the circuit but behind the scenes in the pits getting the cars ready and you can see look at this james dean sits uh, in the tunnel awaiting to make his uh, pass back on circuit to battle you hard point to let's go to try and you know cement his championship but yeah i mean where is the line for these guys they push super hard and like you say even though they've seen their competitors go into the wall and they're going to the wall themselves they're still pushing 110 percent there's no let up at all well so. i think that's all for the good of us right we we <laughs> get to enjoy the bounty of all the crashes and also the incredible drifting that we've seen here so far. Exactly, yeah. So we are going to get ready to move forward with our competition and get our top 16 kicked off as we see James Dean take on Yuha Point Alexico. Those guys have uh, gone out on circuit now to warm their tires. And uh, you know what? This one really uh, does put the, the championship in, in, a, in a bit of a position with uncertainty right now. We know James Dean's car's got issues. And for me, personally, Yuha Point Alexico is a guy that looks on form as Dave Egan joins me yeah. back in the commentary tower. And I just know we're looking at a lot of people saying, you know, this is the track too tough? Is it, is it too hard on these guys? Well, the message we're getting from the pits is we didn't turn up here for it to be easy. This isn't a fun day at the track. This is trying to be the best driver in Europe. Had to be with this amount of talent on one grid, Ian, you've got to give them something exceptional. All these drivers said that this track is easy. The hard part is the walls. How close and how confident do you go to them? And that's what's causing a lot of these issues today. And I'm looking forward to seeing who can take this track by the scruff of the neck and take it to the podium. We have got the world watching right now. Everybody's online discussing it. Everybody's talking about it. That is what the European Drift Masters Championship is all about. Getting imaginations going, putting the best of the best head to head. And right now, the current Finnish champion and current Drift GP champion goes up against the current Formula Drift champion. That is what it's all about. Kicking off that top 16 in. The best of the best going head to head on a track that might claim more victims tonight. Can you take your eyes off? 
different. You certainly cannot. We are good to go for top 16 as the flames fly in Toro. James Dean leading in Point Alexo. Yeah, look at this. A Point Alexo. He's got points to prove. He's door on door. Look at this from Point Alexo pushing the Formula Drift champion around that final turn. He doesn't let up. Point Alexo on a perfect transition. Now, can he get back on the door? He certainly can as they both dive onto the, the concrete walls. The flames shoot higher. But Point Alaska's bumper bent from the back of James Dean's car. Spoiler piece is falling from James Dean's car. He's back on the walls again. And there's Point Alaska as the flames and fireworks fly. What an opening run from these guys in the top 16. That is what it's all about here. It's not about being easy. It's not about your opinion. It's about being the very best in Europe. And right now, these guys are proving it on track. What a run. Yeah, what a run indeed, Dave. Like you said, and you have Point Alaska come out there with a point to prove it. He put it all on the line. He stuck that BMW to the side of that teal and blue Falcon Tires Worth House S14, and wow. You know what? If regular drift championships are boxing, this is MMA. That's what it's all about. These guys are going out there and throwing life and car on the line. A point to Laxo with a point to prove. He's sitting in that top 10 in the championship. He takes Dean down here while well, he's back in the mix again. And Dean, as you said, waiting on parts being delivered to the circuit, patching that car back together. It's one of the toughest nights he's had in competition. A point to Laxo can smell blood. Great chase run from here to there. Yeah, exactly. But we know that James Dean is a machine indeed, and we have seen him pull stuff out of the bag in Riga. We see transitions that no one would even dare try and pull off. But James Dean did, and he made them work. Can he do it right now against Juha Poitelaxco? We can see the front end of that car completely crippled. The headlight pushed inside the vehicle as he got that close to James Dean and tried to force him. This is an unhuman amount of skill these guys are showing. They're out there in one of the most dangerous circuits in the world and putting it wheel to wheel. Not only have you got to worry about the track, you've got to worry about your opponent. James Dean now has to worry about the reliability of his vehicle as well. Will he go 110%? You can be damn sure he will into this battle as our start line marshal removes parts from both cars. This is a coliseum right now. This is about warriors going in there. This isn't for the regular drift driver. This isn't for the guy that does a national championship. This is for special people that will put this risk out there for the sake of being the best and that challenge is being accepted by these 16 guys as the flames go up one more time point to Laxco. look at james dean wow james dean almost making contact with point to Laxco as they fire in and look at this dean now looking for the door of uha point to Laxco's bmw look at james dean as he makes the dive on that inner cliff now point to Laxco fires that bmw to the wall james dean's right there look at the proximity from dean as he's all over point to Laxco pushing the finish driver across the center section the transition made by both drivers how are they Thing. Made it at this speed, and look at James Dean. He is all over the finish driver. The crowd goes mental inside this stadium. That is what it's all about. Top 16 is good to go, Ian. First battle is a cracker. What a battle. What a way to kick off the championship of round four, and what a way to force a win. Look at James Dean, hand out the window. That car is running right. He's feeling good. Look at the tire mark on the door from Point to Laxco. But that chase from James Dean was insane. The proximity in Outer Zone 2 was just phenomenal. And, you know, people go out there and say, I wonder does the track work? I wonder is it a good tandem track? When you get to this stage and these guys are that comfortable, that's what they produce. And we have to put one of these guys into the top eight. What a run. I'm out of breath, and it hasn't even started the proceedings <laughs> really here. But slide him left for the finish driver. You have points to Laxo. Slide him right for James Dean, who is going through. Kieran goes James Dean. He needs one more vote and he gets it. James Dean goes through to the top eight, the championship very much still in his sights. Got to go back to our judges. Guys, that is how it's done. Oh, what driving there. That was absolutely fantastic from both drivers. Uh, both drivers on the absolute perfect qualifying line on their lead runs. Uh, like It would have been well over 90 point qualifying runs from both of them there. But uh, it all comes down to the chase runs really. You have started off absolutely amazingly on James' door from uh, around outer zone one. He was inches away from him. Unfortunately, he did fall off a little bit from outer zone two, but when I say fell off a little bit, he still maintained relatively good proximity for the rest of the track. But then you switch him around and James' chase run, literally in my notes, all I could write was wow, because he was on his door from the the, from the very get-go, all the way through the, through the track, maintaining that, uh, that proximity inches away from him. Literally the perfect chase run. So overall, James takes the win.
Whew, and James takes the win indeed. We move it along. Andreas Vasiliouskas, 800 horsepower, goes up against the man in second position, coming off two podiums in a row. Dregos Hipke representing Poland. You know which one the fans are behind. But Vasiliouskas' car, extremely fast on this circuit. He's been in the wall before. He's also been in the top five in qualifying. This is another heavyweight run in the tension as these guys come off the line and go through the gears into that first corner. It's Vasiliouskas to lead him in. Yeah, Vasiliaskas fires that car in. You can see him nice and high on the bank. And look at this. Hipkey right on the door now as they transition into the second front clip. Look at Hipkey all over the back end. Um, that almost an home rotation there from Vasiliaskas. How did he balance that car? Hipkey on the door, though, almost making contact with the front wheels as they transition into the third out zone, Dave. Wow, as they come across the... Well, look at Hipkey. He's all over Vasiliaskas. He is not letting him away here as they come across the line. In your lifetime, you see him driving like this. Incredible. What a these guys just had between top 32 and top 16. Look that, at that is insane. The fans are on their feet. Insane. That's why you watch the sport, Ian. Do you you know can what? watch drifting all day, every day, and go, yeah, yeah, I get it. But you cannot take away from what these guys are risking. It is knife edge stuff out there. And I, for one, cannot believe that these guys have turned what looked like a very scrappy top 32 now into door on door extreme action in the top 16. It's coming alive here in the Motor Arena in Toro. Yeah, it certainly is, Dave, as the lights dim. Like you say, we light it back up again with lasers, fireworks, and everything we can throw at it. As Gregor Zimke just puts a pass down to cool his car down. Remember, he gets two minutes to get back to the start line. You know what, for me, Hipkey just watched James Dean and said, I'm second in the championship. I need to battle. He will battle. If he wins this, he will battle James Dean in the great and eight. That's, and if he beats him, he's going to go He's going to take the championship. That's the so thing. This is a big thing right now. Can Vasiliaskas stop Gregor Zimke in his tracks? He's the got the pace to do it, Ian, as they come off the line. Vasiliaskas now cannot let Hipke away, and he does it. Dive, initiate at the exact same time. And already Vasiliaskas trying to close that door. Hipke's on a gray line. Look how close they are to those inner zones, Ian. It's inch perfect from these guys. The best of Lithuania and Poland now going door to door, wheel to wheel as the flames fire into the stands. And Vasiliaskas got one last chance to make a big dive here through the center section, but he's let Hipke get away. Hipke's on an absolute blinder of a lead run right to the edge of the circuit. And Vasiliaskas closed the door towards the end. Wow. Unbelievable stuff there, but like you say, few errors there from Vasiliaskas. Just didn't have that proximity throughout the run. The same as what uh, Dragos Hipke some, had. You know what? I think people watching online from other drift championships, other drivers, are here going, this is carnage. This doesn't make any sense. Yeah. It doesn't make sense. Doesn't That's make the sense. point. You're in another stratosphere here with guys that aren't <laughs> even thinking normally like human beings. They are not on your level because that's what they do every time they come out here. And right now, we've got to get another decision on the board. Will it be Will it be the Lithuanian, uh, Andreas Vasiliauskas, or will it be Hipke keeping his championship hopes alive and going to face James Dean? It's heating up here. Judges drop their scores in. A slide of left for Gregor Hipke. slide of right for Andreas Vasiliauskas. Yeah, which way is it going to go? And look at that. One vote for Hipke. Will he get another and go true to the top eight to face James Dean? He does. Hipke back in the game, Ian. And we got to go to our judges. Guys, this is heating up. Yeah, the first one there, obviously, is uh, a really good run, a good lead run. Um, but Hipke has got a great, is a great chase, and he has good proximity throughout the run, especially as they come through the cut through. He's really close from there. Um, so on the first one, he takes advantage. Uh, and on the second one there, again, Hipke has a great lead run. Uh, he has proximity in places, but not quite as close. As it comes down to that, it just basically comes down to proximity. Um, so over both runs, uh, Hipke takes it. So there we go, Dragos Hipke taking the win, and that means, Dave, great eight will be Hipke crazy. Dean. Crazy. And that already sets the tone. Now, Pavel Borkowski, one of the best chase drivers in the game, representing Poland. He goes up against Ivo Sharulis. He has been the plucky underdog, but do not count him out, because you do at your peril, because this guy is going so well on this track. And as you can see, not a lot of damage on either of these guys' cars, because they have been on point all weekend. While well, they come up against each other right now with a spot in the top eight up for grabs. This is what it's all about. Latvia versus Poland. And we were in Latvia two weeks ago, and the Latvian guys were annoyed that two Polish guys took the podium. But will there be some revenge here? And there is a chance now for Sarulis to take down Borkowski as they close the doors, strap in, and get ready for another insane two runs in this Torun Arena. The lights will go green. They will hit the gear and go. 
have the fans hold their breath one more time. The tension in the air, the atmosphere here is incredible. They're off the line. Burkowski to lead in Cerullis into that first corner. He certainly does. And as Burkowski fires it in, Cerullis gives him a little bit of room. That's not what he needs to be doing. As Burkowski's on a perfect line now, Cerullis starts to make the dive as they transition into the second front zone. Can Cerullis get back on the door? Almost overtakes to Cerullis. He makes a big error. Borkowski keeps cool, calm, and collected. Those sticks the car to the wall. Now starts to make his transition through the center of the circuit. And now Cerullis that jumps in on He almost overtakes. He's in a bad line here the whole way through. He's got to play catch up. Borkowski's like, come at me, bro. And he's across the line with a phenomenal lead run. That's what we expected from this guy. We're waiting for him all year just yeah. to show us that shine. And right now, he's doing a great job of that. And I think Cerullis might have just been out card and out gunned there over those 40, 50 seconds. Yeah, we haven't seen that Pavel Borkowski that we've been looking for all year, like you say, Dave. That Evo Cerullis, though, we've seen him in action and we've seen him performing this season. Like you say, at the previous round, in Riga, he really came alive at his home ground. Can he turn it on now where it really needs to count? This is his opportunity in the league well, position. He's only got one opportunity left, Ian. That's the way he's got to look at it. He survived this whole weekend, but now he could be going home without the win if he doesn't pull off a sensational lead run. Borkowski, you can imagine the anger, the grimace in his helmet right now. He's like, I have taken this guy down. As they come through the gears, watch the chase run here. It will be spectacular. Yeah, look at this as Pavel Borkowski doesn't do what Ivo Sudis and he gets right on the door now, starts to fall some proximity as they transition through the center of the circuit. Look at Ivo Sudis, so close, almost over. It takes again as he throws too much angle on it, washes himself down off of that concrete wall, finds himself in the middle. Borkowski nearly gets himself caught up in the center of the circuit now they transition back Borgowski giving Cerulis some room does he feel like he's done enough or could this go one more time well, Cerulis is after fighting himself back into that Ian he had no opportunity but to go fast and go hard that's exactly what he did and Borkowski making the error coming into the center section got caught up on the inside had to dial off angle and that's what really cost him some proximity there not what we expected I expected him to really nail that one home but he's left some thinking for the judges to do here over the two runs and they're having a good conversation here as they come back to their area to get their results. It's so tense out there. These guys want it so bad. It's like I've been saying all day. You don't come here if you're a normal driver. If you're a normal drift competitor somewhere, don't come here. Don't even, you can't even understand what these this guys are doing. This is not for you. This is not for you. This is another level of commitment. These guys are smashing cars, building them back up and coming back out twice as hard. That is what it's all about. And look at that, at the side by side, a lead to lead, a chase to chase. And you know what? These guys making it absolutely perfect round. There are a lot of guys saying that the walls are too dangerous. They're making a mess of everyone's cars. But when you get it right and you're on the right line, like these top 16 drivers are doing so far, there is no danger. Well, the there isn't an we element to it. The driver's saying this track is easy. It's easy. When you get it right, it's but fine. It's when it's you how, wrong, when, when you, you make get, the when mistake. You, make, you can't make a mistake. Exactly. And then I was speaking to Davi Karkoshi before you saying, well, if you think you can make a mistake and not be punished at this level, what are you doing here? Exactly. And that goes to show, but which guy will go through to our top eight? Slide him left for Cyrulis, right for Borkowski. Who's going to get the call? Kieran goes for Borkowski. He needs one more vote to go through, and there he has it. Pavel Borkowski moves on to our top eight. That means there's two Polish and one Irish into the top eight already. Shooting it back to the judges. Talk us through that one. Some errors on both sides. Yeah, it really does come down to errors, Dave, and who made the most mistakes. Unfortunately for Ivo, it was him. Um, Borkowski and his lead run was absolutely fantastic, inch perfect the whole way around. Ivo, unfortunately, he made several mistakes on his chase run, and the worst of those, including a big, a big shallow up on outer zone two and coming way offline. You switch him around then, and Ivo's lead run, unfortunately, wasn't anywhere comparable to Borkowski's. Um, so overall, Barkowski definitely wins the lead runs. And then when you c compare the chases, it was a little bit tight, but um, Evo definitely didn't give uh, Barkowski a, a, a good enough lead line to chase. So he may do with what he had, and he even had maintained some proximity in places and had slightly better proximity than Evo over the over the entire course. Course. So for, uh, overall, Barkowski uh, coming away with the the lead and the chase and taking the win overall. We move it on to our next battle, Ian. That's not something you often see. The champion of the Middle East going up against the champion of Europe. 
that is what this championship brings. Ahmed Daham, Red Bull athlete, goes up against Destino Tires, Adam Zalewski. Zalewski with the experience on these tracks, but Daham has a lot of trophies in that cabinet. Will he make a big statement here at Daham for the Middle East drivers and finish higher than any other Middle East driver in the past? Or will Zalewski continue his rise? We're about to find out. Well, we certainly are, Dave, as they fire in. Look at this from Daham, straight to the wall, no messing around. Business as usual. This guy finished in fifth in qualifying, and this is why. Look at the pace in Daham's car as he transitions very quickly, just catching the barriers again. He's on a perfect line. Zalewski starts to get into it, but a little wobble from Daham. He comes off the wall ever so slightly in the center of the circuit. Yeah, Daham making contact with the wall, but he's staying in it. Look at Zalewski now, trying to make that last ditch out. A little contact between these guys. There is nothing left on track right now between these guys as they smash doors, rub wheels, trade paint, and show what it's all about. Jordan versus Poland. Where else would you see it? Well, I mean, unbelievable uh, uh, what we just witnessed there as uh, Deham's bumper hangs off his car. The flames shooting out the back of Deham's car almost singed Zalewski's hair inside the car. That's how long they were. Uh, you know what? That sounds unrealistic. It's probably it's anything can happen realistic. here in the Drift Masters European Champs. And of course, they call it the Hamty Light because it's just that more aggressive than anybody else's. <laughs> it's part of his showpiece. It's a real part of the Middle East culture. That noise, that that exciting uh, element. And we're just getting word from our in our headset that maybe Deham may have debeated a tire when he made contact with that outer wall. He did touch the wall a little bit hard. He kept it, and we saw a lot of guys get sucked back in and, and lose it. But Deham kept it like to the floor, and he pulled himself out of there. But did it damage a wheel or damage a tire? And more importantly, Dave, something to note that he, if he debeated here on the wall, he finished that runoff full throttle on on one tire. No, he couldn't have. He actually got the perfect line. So we'll wait to see if he has got a DB or what exactly is happening with his car. If we get the camera around the other side of the car, it might be uh, something we can look at. Well, but, that uh, one. That one is definitely that on a rim. On. That's, That's fine. fine. And it's the right hand side of this car. Is taken. I will be more impressed. If he's got a DB, I will be blown away. No, maybe it looks like that. No, it looks like that. No. It may be a damage to the wheel. Is definitely. it DB'd? Um, it looks like it's okay. Oh, it definitely is. Look. Yeah, look, it's punctured. Only the bottom's flat. Dave is fine. Yeah, the top's fine. The top's fine. He Bottom's can go punctured. again. So how about that? Now, what happens here? So is he allowed to continue with, with a D-beat on the car? Is he is he going to have to take two minutes to go and get it fixed? Can he get it fixed? Is that the case? You can definitely tell he hit that wall a little harder than he wanted to. And as you said, he finished that run on a perfect line with a completely flat rear right tire. And, and for me, and, and that for me answers a big question that I had in my mind. Why did the ham slow down when he come into the touch and go and get into out of zone three? He slowed down. It was a slight. He, he still had pace, don't get me wrong, but he wasn't as fast as what he was and Zalewski got on the door easier. Yes, and That's also Zalewski was there for braking to stay sort of committed so that could tell the story. Very absorbent Ian. Well no, Dave, we might keep you. I'm not here for nothing. <laughs> yeah. So look point. at this, yeah, look at this, a replay. We're going to see uh, the run. And, I mean, and look at the pace. And you can see separation. Zalewski, don't get me wrong, he's close, but Daham has yeah, got more got, pace. Now, what, this is where, watch Daham as he goes towards this wall. He hits a couple of water barriers just around about here. Boom, hits the wall, stays in. The tire's flat at this point. You can see Zalewski starting Zalewski, to make the ground. Yeah. And look at the lift. As Daham's wheel almost lifts the front wheel, lifts off the ground. He has no control there. You oh, can, you see, can the, see the tire. You can see the tire yeah. just washing off the back of the car. And Zalewski's like, I stay in it, but he's very slow. And Zalewski's left for breaking just just oh. insanity it doesn't make any sense i want to, i want to, want them to go again I mean, if it's possible we'll scrap that we'll give the ham another tire and see how good they are then he only needs one tire in i mean we could give him a tire i mean there's been like there's a whole wall of tires on the side <laughs> of the track so surely now they're pulling back to the line and i'm not sure exactly what's happening now is the ham going to be continuing with one puncture is Zalewski is definitely going to be the leader. If that is the so, case, Deham is not going to have the pace here. No, I mean, and the way you've got to look at it is if Deham was on the wrong line, this goes back to the Shanahan-Romanovsky battle. If Deham was on the wrong line, he calls that himself, which means he doesn't get the option to change his will. It wasn't caused by anything exactly. on the track. It, was it wasn't caused by Adam Zalewski. No. So that means he doesn't get the option to change the will, which means he won't be able to finish the run. And that is a massive shape in my and eyes. Zalewski's looking confident there. Deham is going so to pull off the circuit. Now, off the this circuit. is the question. The clock will be started on the ham, or is he going back into it? He has just got to put one wheel on this car, but he's got two minutes to do it. Is that possible? I don't know. I mean, could the tension get any more? Has they, and the amazing thing is they go through that tunnel, they just disappear. You've no idea where they're going, what they're doing, and then they reappear with those headlights they are. It's so eerie, but also so cool. Very, very cool indeed. But like you say, um, I mean, I'm worried for um, Ahmad to ham.
so sorry for the break in silence there. It's like we're just getting quite a lot of information in our headsets, Dave. Yeah, we get some information that's coming through from the track radio, from the guys, the producers behind the scenes. And what they're saying now is that it may be the case that the ham cannot continue because he is not allowed that time to I mean, you go into a battle, you've got to finish two runs without adjusting your car. So right now, the ham may not be. So yeah, it looks like Deham will be eliminated as he is not allowed to put a tire back on that car. So unfortunate. Um, but again, you cannot start on a puncture or a D-bead, meaning that, yeah, automatically Adam Zalewski gets the win. Not what we wanted to see, but at the same time, if you go close to those walls and make those mistakes, Ian, that's what happens. He'll feel hard done by there, but the rules are the rules here at Drift Masters European Championship. You must start and finish the entire two runs without adjusting anything on the car. And in that case, the ham would have to adjust that tire. He's not allowed to run with one tire off the rim. So there you go. That is the rules. And Zalewski gets a, a little touch yeah, I mean, of luck there. And, and listen, it goes back to exactly what we said before and, um, and what Ryan Sage said and what our judges said about the Jack Shanahan situation, which is he was offline, he clipped the wall, he caused the error himself. So, I mean, we can't give somebody time to fix a car when they caused themselves by being offline. Yeah, it was an unforced error. He went too wide, he, he made a mistake. He finished the run, which is a really interesting thing that he actually did okay, but he is unsafe to complete the second run, meaning Adam Zalewski will go up. And that means at this point in time, as it stands, one Irish driver, three Polish drivers in that side of the bracket. So Poland looking very strong right now here on their home turf. Yeah, very, very strong indeed. But we do have one now, which is uh, an easy one to decide. It will be Jakub Puszkowski to take on Christos Romanowski, but naturally, Dave, like we said, Christos Romanowski's car um, far beyond repairable after contact with the wall twice in the same place, which means Jakub Puszkowski will get a buy run in the top which 16. Means, if I'm not mistaken, there will be four Polish drivers and one Irish driver now into the top eight on statistics. So Poland being very dominant here right now. And Puszkowski, as you mentioned before, will go up against a, a no opponent because Romanowski is out. He's got the championship points. He has it, might have the championship points, but he doesn't have is an opportunity to get back out there. Chassis damage to that car. Yeah. And Puszkowski, who it actually now has only completed one competitive run to get to the top eight, essentially because Puszkowski went in the wall. In fact, sorry, Puszkowski got back out again, but he's had a pretty handy run here, but he's driving very well. I mean, listen, he's going to be counting his lucky stars because this guy has had, like you say, Dave, by run after by run, technically, uh, with uh, Toby Ash Pushan putting that car into the wall. And, uh, yeah, I mean, Jakub Puszkowski there in that Orland GT86 2JZ just putting on a show for the crowd here on the local but he's guys. Been, he's been so solid. He, uh, the one thing... Very, uh, very good car control. I said from the start, this car has sustained no, no damage, damage. Which means that he's done as many runs as anybody else right now, in fact, more than most of the grid, and he has just been smooth, consistent, and keeping that carbon Kevlar on that GT86. That, to me, is a guy that's going to be tough to beat. And he will go up against... Well, he'll Jakub, go against the winner of, yeah, of, uh, of, of, of Pavel Kropolinski and Tuarani Kavia, but here you go. Jakub Szkonski getting the win automatically going through to our top eight. It will be James Dean going up against Hipke, the two top positions in the championship, head-to-head -head in the top eight. Then it will be Pavel Borkowski going up against Adam Zalewski, all Polish affair there. And now we move it on to a very interesting one. Poland going up against Norway, and right now, if, if you're a casual fan, you want the other European countries to get back into this, and you're cheering for Torn in Kavir, because the Polish are looking unstoppable tonight. Yeah, exactly. The Polish do look like they've got this one absolutely buttoned down, Dave, like you say. But don't count Torn in Kavir out of the fight. This guy, we see him at round one in one of these custom build circuits. Absolutely rock and blow everyone away. I mean, you named him the Sledgehammer. <laughs> Yeah, he, I, I, you know what? He just has so much aggression. And sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. He's taken down Karkoszczyk already. He now goes up against one of the other stars of the Polish series here, Korpelinski. So you've got like a Norwegian champion going up against a Swedish champion, but one of them is Polish. You try and figure this thing out, right? You figure that out. That's yes, that's... so Korpelinski, the current Swedish champion, who's from Poland, is now going to go in the lead position as the higher qualifier. Kvyat will be in the chase. I was talking to his guys. He is pumped up. He's like, I'm taking the win today. He said, I've had a rough two or three rounds. He's after round one, he got up there on the podium. He hasn't had the same success in other venues. But today, he said, to hell with the car. We're going in absolutely ham into that first corner. Well, look at this. He does go in ham, and he flicks the lights on and gets on the door. 
of Pavel Korbelinski. Almost win on well from Toraini Kavir. This is the Kavir that we're used to seeing from round one. The machine almost makes a big error there. Has to put a little straight in ever so slightly in that inner zone too, but starts to get back into it now as he finds the door of Pavel Korpolinski's BMW. He makes one last ditch dive. Again on the door to Torani Kavir as Kavir pushes Korpolinski around the final out of zone and over the line. Impressive stuff there from Torani Kavir. had one big error on the inner zones, but everything else was door to door. And he did exactly what he said he was coming here to do, which was put on a show for the fans. We couldn't deny that. After that run, the Korpolinski, we've talked about his consistency, his precision. Once again, it comes true to fruition there. He makes no errors. He is so comfortable on any track he goes out on. You know, the only thing for me that, uh, it, that I can see happening right now is outpaced. I think that Korpolinski's car doesn't have the same amount of pace um, that Kavir's has got. Kavir's car is super quick. You know, like we say, he came to round one with, with his standby engine. It was just a stock LS3. He's now put the LS3 back in, but it's now supercharged. So he is running more horsepower than he was running before, and he's a good driver. He plays Korpolinski, he's kind of grown into this championship now, Dave. Yeah, and he's looking like a real contender. If you're not aware of his driving, you are now, because we're after, you know, three rounds, and we're now into the fourth round. He has been there all the way along, sitting in that top ten of the championship, looking like a real contender. If Kavia can't put him away here, I think Kavia's kissing goodbye to being in that top three at the end of the year. That's what's on the line here this early in the championship. But Korpolinski, expect him to be on the door from the off here. Doesn't matter what you think about either country or driver, it all that matters is the next four 40 or 50 seconds. Who's going to take it through to the top eight? Here we go. Yeah, here we go indeed, Davis. Torani Kavir fires it in now. Korpolinski needs to repay the favor and get on the door. Oh! Wow! And a big contact from Korpolinski as he absolutely tosses it away and throws the car into the wall. And you know what? That is an aim of survival in that battle. Korpolinski, we just said how consistent he is. He went to a place he wasn't comfortable with there. He came in faster behind Kavia that he was comfortable with all day. Yeah, had it goes to show Kavia was entering that corner braver fast. than anybody. Yeah, look at this. We're going to go back to a replay. Look how fast Kavia comes in. Look at the proximity to the wall and look at that. As we can see, Pavel Korpolinski put that car on the wall and uh, yeah, it's such a shame to see him out of competition. Look at Torani Kavia. This means the world to him. This guy, like I say, Got the uh, got the third place podium at round one. He loves the small, tight, intimate circuits. He loves putting on a show and he's built for the himself, crowd. Yeah. There's a fan base out he here. Certainly is, and he's lost a few points uh, from round two and three. We need to make it official though. Uh, slide them left for Kavir, right for Korpolinski, and. Uh, Kieran, Kevin and David make it official. Torani uh, Kavir gets the winner, goes through to the great eight. And uh, yeah, Pavel Korbelinski stands dejected. Dave looks at what is left of his yeah, car, I hand mean, on I his mean, head. To be honest, looking at the situation, the sixth, uh, I was about to say there, the sixth time champion of Torani Kavir could be a reality in the future here because what I'm trying to think here is that, yes, there's suspension damage here, but realistically, those tire bells, when you hit them, it looks a lot worse than it is because you're taking panels off. And you're, a lot of the force or the impact, it's not a dead stop. So it's spinning the car through it. So while it does suck you in sometimes to get the front end in, it actually is, we've seen every car go that went into those tire bells this weekend come back out again. It's the other end of the circuit where those concrete walls are. That's where they do not come out of. So Kavia, look at that. It's just one of those moments. This is what Drift Master is all about. You can see one guy, it's almost like who's braver? Who's got the most testicular fortitude to go into that cor into that corner and say, I'm gonna hold it on that line. And look at Kavia, he holds it and, K and look Corbett is he cannot hold it. And that goes to show exactly what this championship is all about. Knife edge, precision, the best of the best, and it's an exciting day for European drifting right now. So, a little bit of cleanup on aisle nine again, Ian. <laughs> yeah, uh, I mean, uh, our track staff just uh, perilously tossing <laughs> Pavel Korpolinski's car around on. You the know, when you go to the arcades, right, and they have those machines, the claw. You, you put in a, yeah, the claw, you put in a, a, a coin and you just grab it. This is like the most expensive game to claw <laughs> I've ever seen. But you know what? I won't have a go because every single time that driver wins, he gets a car. He gets 50,000 euro, 100,000 euro car every time. Yeah. And, and they never miss. Never miss. Never miss. Never I've seen miss. them go out there. They got every single car. I'd currency. be worried they start dropping them, Dave. Yeah. <laughs> That's when we need to reconsider our, our situation. Absolutely. Look at Korpolinski, though. Still got a smile on his face. He, listen, he knows he threw it all on the line. And um, 
I've seen, you've seen some other drivers come out here just to say, you know, you can see the, the commentator, the Polish local commentator come out to talk to Korpelinski. You know what? He is a guy that is super competitive. Oh, yeah. And I think this is where the misconception comes in with drifting and say, oh, these cars are all getting rigged. If you think Korpelinski right now is saying this track is too hard or it's too dangerous, you don't know this guy. No. He's sitting there going, I had him. I had him, I had and him, I was yeah. going through to the top eight. I was in the championship. They're, all they're thinking about is how to be the best. I mean, you don't go to become an MMA star and expect to just not get hit in the face and say, <laughs> don't touch me in the face. I want to be involved. I want to get to social media. I want to get the Instagram out of this. But don't beat me but up. But don't beat me up. I mean, you've got to come here and get bet up a little bit to survive. And that's what James Dean said to me and a lot of the guys on the grid. I was speaking to Karkoshik, speaking to a lot of these guys said, come in here. And you think this is easy, or you're not going to have damage over the year, or it's just about Instagram likes and followers and waving out the window at fans, you're in the wrong it. place. And because this is, is all about, and again, you are nowhere in the world being the best at what you do unless you're giving away big risks. Exactly. That's what it's all about, risk. I mean, these are machines. You will see Jim Olofsson roll a car onto his roof two weeks ago, compete in the Swedish Championship last week and back here again. Now he's done chassis damage. You think he's going to be in Hockenham? He probably will be. <laughs> That's the way these guys work, because they're saying it's do or die, get to the finish. And a lot of guys say it's not just about being the champion here, like it would be in any other national series. It's not just about winning battles. You survive this tour. You are one of the best in Europe, and it's a fact. You can't turn around and argue it. So, Korpelinski will go back. That. Hanging out the window. Yeah, the waving to the local fans, having some fun. Uh, not what he wanted, but I no. think he's got a way a lighter than some of the guys. He'll have watched some of the cars in the, in the pits being repaired and said, you know what, this is, this is pretty cosmetic. We'll get this thing sorted out. And we'll be back in action in Hockenheim. Exactly. And the thing is, you speak to a lot of these guys in the pits. I took a walk around there uh, most of today and, and last night, and you see their cars absolutely destroyed. And you, said to, and you, and you say to them, like, how are you feeling? What's, what's the vibe? What are you going to do? And they say, what are we going to do? Well, we're going to build the car again, and we're going to come to the next round, and we're going to push again. And we're not just going to push like we did this time. We're going to push 110. 10% and they know and they know that if they don't put it all on the line what what are they here for like you say why are they turning up if they don't feel like they are going to achieve if they don't put it all on the line and these guys are not scared to hang it all out there and uh, if there's walls there's walls and that's part parcel of the championship absolutely uh, if you're watching it online make sure you share it out make sure you talk to your friends and say hey you got to check this thing out whether you're a massive drift fan or you're just joining us tonight this is the craziest motorsport in the world the most visually dynamic and also the most unique because it's not a race it's all about style angle and risk and risk is a massive part if you're a racing driver and you're going around a track you sure there's risk but you're doing the same thing over and over again here you got to contest with being close to walls. you got to contest with doing something the car isn't naturally comfortable doing. It's not even the way you drive a car normally in. It doesn't even make sense <laughs> half the time. You're driving it completely opposite. You're letting the wheel go to transition in half a second at 60 miles an hour along concrete walls or millimeters from the back of your car. Where would you see it? And then you got 20 countries doing it. Then you've got a tarmac a stadium to do it. And then you're going to have fans screaming at you to go out there and win. And then you've got us sitting here going, we're not too sure what's going on anymore. That is it, the amazing part of this championship. And for me, you can't take your eyes off it. I no. mean, no matter what you think about drifting, you cannot take your eyes off this championship. And that's what it's shown all year. We would really appreciate you guys checking it out, supporting this brand new sport. And uh, if you've, you know, from my perspective anyway, can take your eyes off this when you're missing out. This is going to go to a very emotional conclusion tonight. And I think there's going to be a lot of guys watching on from around the world that are going to be just as exhausted as us, Ian. Yeah, exactly. And like you say, we made history at round one. And I had that feeling when I walked into this place on Thursday morning that um, this was going to be something spectacular and this place was going to create a whole other chapter within this uh, championship. And, and it certainly is right now. As I we say, we've seen a lot of these guys in, in championship contendencies dropping out of competition. Uh, like I see, keep saying, Bartosz Stanowski and Connor Shanahan bowing out of competition in top 32. This place is going to make um, something special tonight. And I think, personally, it's going to open the championship up as we move forward into Hockenheim. In just three weeks' time, the 8th of September, we go to the Hockenheim ring in Germany. And uh, we change it up again, Dave. It's not going to be tight. It's not going to be tight. It's not going to be concrete walls. It's not going to be uh, inside a circuit. It's, it's going totally to be different. It's going to be flat out fifth gear, 100 over 100 mile an hour entries. Yeah, and right now there's a transit van doing a, a display of drifting in the middle of the arena. That is how random. With this a young lady holding the flag. Yep. I'm not sure what's happening right now, but you know what? I'm entertained. That's I want to see my postman do that in his transit van. My postman does not do this at all. He <laughs> just stops and gives the parcel and says, "That's my job." So uh, this. <laughs> This is one of those things that happens here that doesn't happen anywhere else in the world. 
and this uh, amphitheater right now is just having a ball and again we talk about the unforgiving nature of this track top 32 it looked like the track was too hard you come to the top 16 and then you start seeing incredible runs so that's the thing i mean the judges have spoken about in the past saying we're building these tracks to test the best we're not here to make it easy for everybody and everybody could do it so everybody feels great about themselves and it's easy I mean, if you had a figure of eight in track with no walls around any of these drivers, this would be the longest day in life because we had 700 one more times. Those walls have separated a lot of the big names and a lot of the guys saying they're pushing too hard, overdriving the cars, probably just putting a little bit too much pressure on themselves. And we saw that point Alaxco and James Dean battle was highlight reel. Hipke and, uh, my mistake, Hipke and Vasilyowskis, my mistake. That was another highlight reel battle. In fact, they've all been highlight reel battles. So we're ready just to finish off the track clean up here and get ourselves back in the mix at the Drift Masters European Championship. It's round four here in Torun, Poland. Track clean up still underway after a big hit foot by Korpolinski into those tire barriers. And then they lead the way for Tuar and Kavia from Norway to move forward to the top eight. So here's how it stacks up. One Irishman into the top eight four Polish men into the top eight and now a Norwegian. Yeah, a Norwegian in the mix and uh, we move it along to our next battle as soon as we get the all clear from our track staff and that will be Pavel Trella to take on Pavel Grosz. Uh, two Polish guys going to go head to head and then we move it on to the final battle in our top 16 which will see Eli Hutanji take on Joe Hutanji. So there will be indeed five Polish men at least one Irishman, one Norwegian, and a German in the mix. Yeah. So, make sense of that. You don't have to. But the weird thing is I'm looking forward to the battle. I'm looking forward to Trella and Grosch because those guys have been going hard all weekend. But this Hutunji battle, the, bro the brotherly, the brotherly yeah. rivalry. See, see what we said earlier when um, we we spoke to these guys at drivers' briefing, and we already had the battle format for today. And uh, I said to these guys, look, I'm looking forward to seeing if you guys can take your top 32 uh, battles together and make your way into the top 16, which they both did. And I said, if you both hit the top 16, I want to see the battle because you both already know each other's driving. You drive with each other, you train with each other constantly. You know each other's cars very, very well. So there is nothing to hide there. Yeah. There, is, I, there I, is no feeling you know what I said. You know what I said to Joe Hutunji? I said, for all of the older brothers in the world <laughs> that have had younger brothers come in and be better at them at something, you gotta win this. Yeah. And we both agreed that, you know, we were both older brothers in this situation. We were both better looking. We just had more talent, and now it's time to prove it. I can't prove it, because I would never do, but he is going to go out there and prove it against his younger brother, who is sitting higher in the championship than him. What a great battle we have ahead of ourselves. We're going to have Red Bull Drift Brother panels everywhere. <laughs> it's going to be crazy. It's going to be it's going to be a special moment. And yeah, Eli Hutanji, he finished higher um, in qualifying than his brother Joe. So, I mean, listen, that, that is going to be a, a, a very a good end to our top 16 and, and a good way to kick off our great eight. The fireworks fly outside the arena, Ian. I'm not sure where the next explosion is coming from. Will it be on track or off track here? Well, it hopefully is, it's, it's off, off track. <laughs> it's just ridiculous as an event. But what is important is that we are getting through the order and this is an interesting one Pavel Trella against Pavel Grosch so uh, Pavel is definitely going to win this that's that's the and a Polish uh, and a Polish guy is going to win this Grosch goes in with way less horsepower but that E30 can move now Trella we've kind of expected him to come and dominate this year at the European Championship but he's just had a bad run of it mechanical failures some crashes some spins qualifying under difficult conditions right here now though in front of his home fans in that little crazy Opel GT he looks ins like really unstoppable, but the third place qualifying run for me showed how, how, just how capable he is on the circuit. Yeah, exactly. And you know what? For me, it lays out that he's going to put down an unbelievable lead run. We're going to expect to see that little um, Opal GT get up and go off the start line, and he's going to stick to that qualifying run. You know, remember, this guy finished third place in qualifying, like Dave said. So he's got a very, very confident lead line. Has Pavel Grosch got the talent and the, and the power in the car to stick with it. Well, we're going to find out. These guys are warming up their tyres as the Drift Patriot makes his way to the start line. Pavel Trella 
It's a cool car, though. Very cool car. Beyond everything else, it's just a cool car. I mean, it's an unusual chassis. Uh, this would have been a Pontiac Solstice or a, GT. An Opel, it's, like, it's a very rare car and a crossover with the United States. And they didn't only sell them on mainland Europe, they didn't sell them our way. So this is something we don't see on the roads. And now we definitely don't see it in drifting. But it is a crazy car. He had one of the biggest crashes last year at a stadium event. Came back this year. That thing looks 100%. But a gross for me with that twin turbo V8. He has to put a foot wrong. He's also taken down Nigel Colfer. So he's on form right now. Let's see what happens. We need another spot in our great eight field. Will it be Trella? Will it be Grosch? As they ended that first score. Look at Grosch. No, backing down. Had almost contact between both cars. What? Incredible driving for both of those guys to get through that first section. Both on that right qualifying line. But Trellet just coming a little bit short of that wall. Now can Grosch start to make the move as they come towards that extremely fast center section. Building that speed up for a big deceleration onto the wall again. And Grosch making a last ditch effort. And look at him. He's right there. No backing down for Pavel Grosch as he pushes Trella across the line. Statement of intent there. Yeah, I mean, unbelievable stuff there from Pavel Grosch in my eyes. Uh, he knew he didn't have the pace in the car, so he used the momentum. He fired that car in on initiation, stuck with um, Trella all the way around. And uh, yeah, I mean, apart from a small wobble on those two uh, front in, uh, zones, not a whole lot really to go wrong there for those guys. No, Grosch, again, he did cut the track to, to get proximity, stayed on the stayed qualifying on the line, line, which is what the judges are looking for. But at the same time, he didn't bring the fight in some areas. Did have moments of brilliance, but he's leaving a little bit of a door open now to Pavel Trella in the reverse uh, order. That if Trella sticks this on the door, gets real close the whole way around the track, he's going to take the win, I think. But easier said than done, but how fast Grosch has been, and even Colfer, who's a very fast car, couldn't catch Grosch. And that's what worries me here for Trella. He's got to stay on him, and especially off the line. It looks like Grosch is one of the fastest cars on the launch here, which is what caught out his last opponent. Let's see what happens. Yeah, so as we see Trella now in the chase position, Pavel Grosch to lead them both in the Drift Patriot. Can he take down the Polish OG? Well, look at this. Trella right on the back bumper as they fire in side by side. Now Grosch on that very, very wide line. And look at Trella right with him. Left foot braking, almost making contact as they come through that front first clipping point. Now they transition back into the second out of zone. And a circuit cut there from Trella. Trella needs to be careful here, Dave. Yeah, he's got the proximity, but he's putting a little bit of track to get there. But look at the proximity from Trella as he comes through the center section. Will he make one last big dive? You can bet your bottom dollar he will as he goes right to the door of Pavel Grosch. And that is a dominant chase run from Trella as he avoids the inside of the track towards the end not conventional but definitely exciting yeah definitely exciting nonetheless like you say a few small errors from um, Trella but judges seem to be pretty set on that one as they put in their scores in Trella and Grosch now make their way around to our flag marshal to find out what the decision is as Grosch just pops open the door and gives a wave to the local fans here Yeah, well, you know what? I would say Trella had more proximity, but he cut a lot of track to get yeah. it. Grosch didn't have the proximity, but he didn't cut the track. Could try we see it one more time in the top try 16? And, try and call it in, because judges will come in with their votes now. Slide him left for Grosch, slide him right for Pavel Trella. Who's going to go through to the top eight? And Kieran says Trella. Will he get another vote? He will, and Trella gets the win and goes through to our top eight. Throwing it back to the judges, guys. Some impressive stuff from the Polish there. Yeah, it was like really nice battle to see and to watch. Uh, what we saw in the first run, that was a decent lead run from Pavel Trella. Uh, Pavel Grosch was coming, trying to get him uh, with slightly smaller angle, uh, and he get him at the end of the track. Then the opposite way, uh, that was again like quite nice run from uh, Pavel Grosch, but uh, Pavel Trella was like really on him all the time. And uh, to be that close is slightly more hard to be, so we went for Pavel Trella. So there you go, Pavel Trella taking the win and moving it on. And we move it along to the next battle of the day. And the last one of our top 16, it will be Eli Hutanji to take on Joe Hutanji. The Red Bull Drift Brothers, Dave, they're going to go at it head to head. No, I'm looking forward to this, Ian. I'm not going to lie. I've been looking forward to this as it was stacking up. And these guys in identical liveries, two brothers, same sponsors, have to now, just for a moment, forget about those ties and go out there as two individual warriors for a spot in the top eight. We are good to go. It's Joe versus Ellie as they come down. And Ellie will lead them in. And look at Joe Tunji not backing down in. Yeah, no, almost identical cars, both running LSXs. And Ellie Hutanji takes the back bumper and booted off his car now. 
Joe gives Ellie some room to manoeuvre as they fire it back in. Now Joe Hutunji looking for the door as he starts to pull it on his brother as he starts to go wheel to wheel day for the centre of the circuit. Ellie Hutunji though steps on the accelerator now trying to pull some distance. Oh, oh look at Joe Hutunji, he's now backing down as he goes to the front wheel. They are all over each other across the line as the crowd explodes. In Torun, the Germans are putting on a show. We've mentioned Ellie Hutunji not putting any damage on that car. Well, if there ever was a time, it was this battle. And as you can see, he got a little close for comfort with those walls. But what about Joe Hotonji? What proximity? Yeah, I mean, listen, that guy, 2017 a King of Europe champion, he threw it all on the line and he put it wheel to wheel with his brother, almost causing, you know, it could have caused a big issue because they clipped wheels when they tried to straighten up. And uh, look at this, Joe Hotonji waving to the... They are looking at each other going... What was what that? Next? Yeah, what are you going to do? Look at the front bumper. He has destroyed his car. They both destroyed their car. It's not on the walls, but on each other. That is what it's all about. It means a lot to these guys. And now you can imagine Eli Hutonji is going. What does the spotters do? No, yeah, the spotters <laughs> turned off the radios. The radios are turned off for this one. They're saying, just go out there. Whatever happens, happens. And Eli Hutonji right now is going, well, I know that was close. And I know he was exceptional. Yeah. How exceptional do I have to be now to beat him? That's the question. And can we get both of these cars home in one piece? That is unlikely right now. It is going to be Joe Hutonji leading Eli Hutonji and it's for a spot in the grade eight. We know we will have one of these German drivers into the top eight, but which one will it be? Rear bumper removed from Eli Hutonji's car. And look, the tension right now as they look across saying, yeah, 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 friends and all that, brothers and all that, but they're probably just putting those visors down, looking straight ahead and saying, this is just any other person in my way. Yeah, exactly, as a Joe Hutonji we just wait to see if his car's safe to go. Everything looks in point. He gets the thumbs up from our start line. Marshall, Joe and Eli Hutanji slam the cars in gear. They look for the green light to go. It will now be Joe Hutanji to lead out Eli Hutanji oh, for a spot in I the great even, eight. I don't even want to watch this one. Oh! Look at the weight transfer front. Eli oh, Hutanji dives wow. in. Big dive. Oh! oh! Eli Hutanji throws it all away into the tire bales, and it is a bright day for all the older brothers in the world as Joe Hutonji shuts it down. He's going to take the win, and that was a brave move. From that entry from Joe Hutonji caused all of that. That yeah. is what happened. Joe Hutonji went in just a little bit too hot, and Eli Hutonji caught the bait. Not much damage done to the car. He, you know, just bounced off those tires, but he went in hot and late, and from my perspective, he just couldn't slow the car down. Yeah, I mean, yeah, he carried a lot of speed. Like you say, Dave, just couldn't slow the car down enough. And we see a replay of this. An unbelievable initiation from Joe Hutanji. He's very low, though. He's he has to struggle to get his way up on the bank. And Eli Hutanji fires it into the tyres. Yeah, it looked like a mistake almost on line, but was it enough to cause Eli to go into the wall? I'm not too sure he gets out of the car. He's still all smiles. He still smiles. Yeah, he still smiles. You, you know, know there's no, because again, they don't really lose this as a team. One of them is going through. I mean, they said they would much prefer this to happen later on, but you can see like he sort of four wheel understeered. Yeah. Looked like he understeered towards the wall there. I'm not too sure, but uh, Eli will have a look around that car and say, Do you know what? A lot of people have come out a lot worse than me here. And uh, it looks like his car may even be movable from the circuit. Uh, we might have just a, a, a steering arm or something. Been, but it's not too bad. It doesn't look too bad. He's got a puncture oh, on the front. Oh, he's got a deep bead, yeah. On the front. Got, maybe that was the key. Maybe that happened before the wall, but we'll speculate on that. But I would assume uh, not the case. Uh, but you never know. You never know, Dave. So, yeah, so. we're trying to get a replay of it. Potentially, he did DB the tyre, and that's why he put himself in it. Because it's very, very uncharacteristic. Yeah, listen, now I know for a fact these guys are running extremely low tyre pressures on the front of these cars. And do you know what? That could be the answer to I the wonder, question. I though, right, he comes through. Let's have a look close up here. Yeah. Yeah. Front He's, tire's flat. Front tire is flat. So he DB'd it. So he DB'd it on initiation and went into the wall. Oh. It was very uncharacteristic. We We've said all day yeah. how well he drove he the car. He has to put a looked, foot wrong. Yeah, exactly. So watch this. Look, yeah, his tire is just, yeah. And look, you can see. Like, uh, understeers, yeah. And he's he understeers. He's got no script there. And, and you can see that there's no tire. Look, look, you can see half the you rim. You can see the rim, yeah. We're like Sherlock Holmes today, Ian. Dave. Yeah. People will be employing us to go find out who killed who soon. That's what's going to We're going to be on like world's deadliest murders or something like that. Well, we, look, With Ross Kemp. We, we figured out the great Eli Hutonji front tire uh, <laughs> debate. So there you go. But now we're going to move it on. Obviously, a very obvious win there for Joe Hutonji uh, using the tactic of beating his brother's front tire. Yeah. Remotely. Uh, remotely debating his brother's front tire. It's a, it's a move we haven't seen quite a lot. No. And of course, having both front tires in the car makes it much easier to drive around the corner.
that's the kind of facts you come in here to watch us Ian, and give you back that information. <laughs> that's what we've supplied that's, to that's you through this for free, for, free. for free live stream. Yeah. We give you all that information and a show and in Poland in the, the speedway More the information circuit. than the show, but <laughs> it's the it's the it's the, the, the granules of information that we can give uh, to these people. So yeah, there you go. A, an interesting battle for sure. Yeah. Yeah, and I mean, and, th and that rounds out our top 16 um, at the moment. Yeah, Joe Hutanji will move through. He will have to take on Pavel Trello, though, yeah. if he wants to pro progress any further. Are and you uh, seeing this at home? Are you uh, seeing uh, this? <laughs> What's going, going on out here? Are you seeing out the here. commitment that these guys are putting into this to be the best? Remember, whoever lifts that trophy, even if you're in fifth, though, you're the fifth best driver in Europe. That's something you can go the whole off season saying. You can walk around your local town. You can get, like, a <laughs> megaphone and shout at people and say, I'm the fifth best drifter in, in, in the whole of Europe. And people have to believe, they'll probably go, no, you're not. And then they'll go, well, here it is. On, and they'll show you the website, the standings. And they're, <laughs> they're like, oh, I'm very impressed now. Um, we thought you'd amount to nothing, but now apparently you're very good at something. So that's a lot of, a lot of part of it. <laughs> so being that guy is what these guys are doing. And it's a, it, look, we're having fun with it. Those guys have had a lot of damage on their cars, but they're still you know, constructively trying to improve their driving style and continue on having fun out there on the track, which is what it's all about. So we got to get Eli Hutondi's car removed from the circuit. No, he's off. He drove it out. He drove it out, and we're just going to um, we're just going to get the off. tire wall, uh, the wall repaired. And uh, I'm looking, I'm looking at the great eight now, and I'm thinking James Dean now looks to take on Dregor's Hipke in the great eight, and that battle for me is the battle that we've seen in the final at most of these rounds. So. Yeah, so what, what, does, what does the great eight hold? Well, I mean, if there's anything like the top 16... Think, I'm not even going to pretend I can predict this now. I, if, you think, if, if you think you can predict this at home, <laughs> then you're a liar. I'm, I'm calling you out because I don't think anybody That's can predict... That's a big statement, though. Yeah, because what, what are you going to say? All the stuff we watch tonight, the Internet's alive with the sound of opinions and, and specialists. Yeah. But right now, the guys and those eight guys left in the show, everybody's got an equal opportunity. And with this particular track, with mechanical failures and everything, I don't know. No, I don't know. And uh, do you know what? Listen, we know James Dean's still not on form. We know that he um, he got through his top 32 battle and his top 16 battle um, looking on form in top 16. Is that car going to hold together for a great eight? Well, I hope so, because if not, it looks like Dregor Hipke could jump ahead and take him down in the great eight. Ryan Sage, you join us back in the commentary tower. That was a, a, a bit of a twist from our top 32, which was dragged out a lot of crashes. We just see a, a pretty special top 16. Yeah, the brothers battle was actually really interesting. It was unfortunate there was a D beat on that uh, front right tire, and you know that's never a fun way to go out. But uh, cool to see those guys battling in the top 16. And of course, the great eight is really ramping up to be something special. Special. And it'll be really interesting to see the condition that James's vehicle is in. It looks like it's great, but as you mentioned, this is a really important battle for the championship overall. Yeah, exactly. I mean, yeah, I mean, Dregos Hipkey right now in that BMW E30 is sitting thinking, hey, I'm not many points behind an FD champion. If I could leap ahead of him now when we go to Hockenheim in three weeks' time, it kind of it levels the playing field a little bit. And uh, yeah, I mean, I'm not sure how this is looking. James Dean may be a little bit nervous. You know, the, the thing that I think is really fun to notice about this whole series is that what seems to make a, a real champion are diverse conditions. And you guys have gone through many different types of tracks. You got high speed, you have very tight, even tighter at the, at the very first round. You're heading to Hockenheim, as you said, you're going to be going to Mondello. I think whoever's the champion at the end of the day can really say in all kinds of conditions, from tight to fast, extreme angle, I was the one that came out on top at the end, and I think that is a really important factor in an overall championship. Uh, uh, yeah, and you're 100% and you're right, because to have them skills to drive from, like you say, fast, wide open circuits, very, very um, high speed stuff with getting on the door, to go back to tight technical stuff where it really matters, your inch, per, uh, inch perfect movements, it's very, very hard for drivers to do. And you know what? The guy who wins the championship is very, very deserved of all of those points. So, yeah, it looks like our track is ready to go. And, uh, yeah, just we were talking about moving it on, we are ready to get going with our great eight. And like we say, Ryan Sage, a not 
a very confident James Dean in that car. He looked good in that second battle against Yuha Point Alaska, but can the car hold together? Well, I guess the question for you is, are you willing to make any predictions at this oh, point? Oh, well, <laughs> I mean, I'm very, I, I'm very open with my predictions. I love to put it out there. I'm always speculating, and, and I think that's, uh, you know, that's a good good way to go and it builds people up and maybe puts a little bit of a plant to seed in some of our guys watching at home. We move it along you can see the battle graphic on screen right now. James Dean to take on Dragos Sipke and like we just mentioned uh, earlier on this is a big one for the championship right now. These two guys are going to be putting it all out there. There's, there's going to be no way these can hold anything back. Next time I, I see you guys I'll, I would love to see uh, both of you fill out your scorecard ahead of time yeah. and, and bet some money on it and let's see who wins. <laughs> I would love to do that. And you know what? I'm definitely going to be wrong. <laughs> So as we can see, James Dean now warming up his tyres. Thanks, Ryan Sage. He's going to head back down and watch this amazing great eight. Money. That's all he's going to do there because we <laughs> have no Sage, idea. Ryan Sage wants to take our money off it. That's which is a fair deal. He's, he's watched plenty of drifting. This 15 is a, years. This of it. is the final from the last round in the top eight. Now this is a championship final. Just had a quick word with Peter Vjainsek. He's saying James gets better every run today, but Hipke knows that if he doesn't win this battle, he may have to kiss his championship goodbye. That's massive in his brain right now. He beats James Dean here though and wins this event. It's all wide open again. Yeah, and, and, I, and I think the problem is. I think the problem is, is could Hip keep push too hard? He's going to have to, Ian. He can't hold back. It's James Dean, for God's sake. He's the formative <laughs> champion. He's beaten him already. He has to put it all on the line. Car, everything. Yeah. This is the most important battle of the season for Gregor Shipke. And if you hold your breath now, I would advise it because they are off the line. As Dean, look at Hipke. He's not letting them away here as they dive. Look oh. at the dive from Hipke onto the door. This is incredible. Wow. But he drops low on the bank and has to adjust. Yeah, Hipke makes a huge error there. Throws everything at it. And look at James Dean. The car working 100%. He gets into the outer zone too perfectly stands on accelerator now Hipke starts to fight back into it but he made a huge error in the first half of the battle look at this though from James Dean he flies into that touch and go can he get back on the wall comfortably he can but Hipke is right there Hipke pushing James Dean over the line he gave it everything but he just went a little too hard into that first corner that was what happened Ian he put it on the door he had to but just as James Dean started to cut the angle towards the inside clip Hipke got caught yeah exactly look at this James Dean fires that car on big angle yeah and like you say Hipke has to slow it down, he drops off the bank, makes a huge error. That could be that could be the nail in the coffin for Dregos Hipke's championship right now. It could be. But it could be. The question is, what reliability problems does James Dean have with that car? We watch drivers have commanding positions and then end up in the wall. I'm not saying James Dean has shown any faults this year. It, it would be very presumptuous for me to say that but at the same time anything can happen and just when you think this championship's going one way it does a 180 degree turn that's what's happened over the last couple of events and even though James Dean is now comfortable looks like the car is running Hipke has one trick up his speed it's, it's gonna be speed it's trick up yeah. his sleeve rather he's gonna have speed here yeah. he's gonna know if I'm faster here I might put James in an uncomfortable position and that's all he can hope for from the lead position here James is gonna be on the door we know that for a fact but just how close they can get to those walls and each other. There's so many variables in this run. The crowd are on their feet here to cheer on their Polish driver. That's going to play a factor as Dean and Hipke slotted into first gear and get the all clear to head off the line. Look at Hipke and he's gone. He's on a full throttle. Will he hold that corner? Well, look at this as Hipke fires it in. James Dean's not going to proximity now. Starts to hunt down the side of that drift for his E30 BMW. And look at James Dean almost making contact there on the transition. Dean very calculated as he sends it in on the door. Oh my God, look at James Dean as he goes wheel to wheel with Dragos Hipke throughout his own two days. Almost contact as Dean now pushes the limits here and goes right back onto the rear quarter of the Drift Warriors E30. And that is a sensational clinic from James Dean. And look at that, running his tire down the door. You talk about this track being too difficult. Is there a track too difficult for James Dean and Dragos Hipke? They made it look easy out there, Ian. And you know what? The writing may be on the wall here for Dragos Shipke. It looked like that mistake on the first run. He'll know it himself, I think. The judges uh, instantly putting in their scores, which would say to me, no foul play there. Uh, Hipke just pushing that a little bit too hard. You can't even see anybody in the stadium anymore. There's that much smoke. It is incredible uh, to watch these guys throw it down at this level. And Hipke, you know what? 
he'd have, it might be a chance wasted. He might have pushed that a little bit too hard. We knew he had to. Yeah. And and you know what? If he did and lost, it's better than not pushing hard because you know James is going to do it anyway. So he gave it everything he had. It's going to make it very interesting in the championship for Hipkey too. And, you know, qualified down the order, he'll probably take this. Has a reasonably good weekend. But let's see what the judges say. We could be wrong. Slide him right for James Dean. Left for Dregos Hipkey. Kieran says James Dean. Kevin says James Dean. And no surprises there as James Dean goes through to our final four and puts one hand on that championship trophy. We'll shoot it back to the judges. Another masterclass for the man they call the machine. Yeah, when we look at the lead runs there, uh, James takes the lead run quite easily um, with quite a big advantage because of uh, Hipkey's error on over zone one where he stalled up. Um, he regain, regains proximity near the end, but I mean, the error was huge. Um, so James takes advantage of the first one. And when we swap it around, um, Hipkey's lead run is not the greatest. Um, it wasn't terrible now, but it was not in, you couldn't compare it to James's lead. Um, and uh, James has a really good chase uh, with good proximity all the way through. So it was an easy enough decision for us. They have it, and as they move it along, we move on to another huge battle. Pavel Borkovsky goes up against Adam Zalewski, two of the rising stars. I'm going to go out there and say it right now, that these two guys are going to be some of the biggest names in world drifting in a couple of years. And in the next couple of minutes, anyone who doubts that statement is about to see why. Borkovsky and Zalewski know the talent. They've been up against each other before. Borkovsky narrowly missing out to Zalewski a couple of occasions and taking some wins against Zalewski. So these guys have gone to the nail in previous rounds, but it will be Borkovsky in the S14 to lead in Zalewski into that first corner. Zalewski comes in very, very early initiation from Borkovsky. And look at the line Zalewski's taking here. Yeah, Zalewski all over the show, though, Dave. This is a very characteristic of Zalewski. Borkovsky, though, looks absolutely cool, calm and collected. He sends it into the out zone. But look at Zalewski now as he starts to push on the door of Borkovsky's S14. Now they transition into the center of the circuit. And Zalewski's going to make another last ditch attempt to get back on the door, and he can as Borkovsky gets on that nice wide, wide high line and takes it over the finish line. But it's getting so hard to see on the cameras the in here. The smoke is just lingering in the air here, making it a very eerie uh, arena right now, as you can see from the wide shot. But they switch it around. Borkovsky now will jump into the chase position. He's one of the best chase drivers in the game. As you said, Zalewski was close, but he was making some errors to stay there. And that's not uh, good enough maybe at this level. However, Borkovsky, he's made mistakes in the past, but he's a guy that's gone out there and beaten the best in the chase position too. I expect him. We thought in the last one he'd be closer. He got a little out of pace. That's what we're going to have to check out here. Borkovsky, has he made some adjustments to that vehicle? Has he made some adjustments to the rear end to say, I need more grip out there? And of course, more grip makes it harder to drive, puts you closer to those walls. If you make a mistake, we you straighten up a little bit, you understeer straight into them. Think about that, Ian, when you're out there trying to dog grip in. That you make the car harder to drive on one of the hardest courses we've ever seen. Yeah, I mean, it just doesn't even bear to think about it. These guys send these cars, like you say, door on door, absolutely full throttle to claim the prize here in Turin. So we are ready to go. It will be now Adam Zalewski to lead out Pavel Borkovsky. Can we see a new guy in the final four this round? Well, it looks that way at the moment as Borkovsky looks like he has the upper hand as they fire it in now. Zalewski starts to lead away from Borkovsky, but Borkovsky fires on the angle now, starts to hunt down the door and at Sestino tires BMW. Borkovsky needs to get back into it. Zalewski makes a huge error and completely drops out of that zone two. Now he starts to find his way in it, but it could be a big mistake for Zalewski. Oh, oh! Borkovsky almost takes the back bumper. Oh! oh and Zalewski impact. goes into the wall. Oh, and we haven't seen someone go into the wall there yet this weekend, and it just showed how fast he was pushing. How did Borkovsky avoid it? Borkovsky, unbelievable stuff. I mean, there is only... The, the width of two cars in that corner as you initiate in there, and he managed to avoid it. Let's check this out in the replay. Right from the off, Borkovsky's making moves. He's trying to get close, but Zalewski, as you mentioned, as he, off trans line, yeah. Yeah, he transitions here, watch as he comes back to outer zone two. He just makes an error, he's in the middle of the track, and he's off that outer zone, so he gets back on it. Borkovsky allowed the opportunity, but look at the pace that Zalewski starts to build here, and as he transitions, look at where Bukowski is. Zalewski goes in, that is inches, just oh, taps each other. Him. Yeah, he he taps him, but gets away with it. That is just insane. Unbelievable. Yeah, we haven't seen anyone take it to the wall there, and it, uh, look at that. The front wheel absolutely destroyed as uh, Zalewski uh, assesses the damage of the 18-year-old current champion, and that car is absolutely in bit state. A lot of work to be done in three weeks. We need to make it official. Who will go through to the top four? 
Yeah, Adam Zalewski or Pavel Borkowski. I think the obvious answer here for my judges is going to be Pavel Borkowski. And he's surviving. And you know what? He goes up against James Dean in the top four. And he has beat James Dean in the past in twin battle action, just to let you know. Yeah, and not only that, Dave, a new name in the final four at this round. We yep. haven't seen Pavel Borkowski yet make it way to uh, the final four in, in the championship so far. We see Zalewski uh, make his way into fourth place at the final round. So Zalewski now drops out of any chance of climbing up the championship. And uh, yeah, Pavel Borkowski, you could be looking at James Dean and saying, I beat you before at this circuit, I'll beat you again. You know what? From my perspective, if there was one man I wanted to go up against James Dean this weekend, it was Pavel Borkowski. On these circuits, he's beaten him before, and he's beaten him so well that the judges have never seen a chase run like it. Will we see a repeat of that, or is James Dean going to prove too strong again? Zalewski goes hard into the wall. Looks like it's quite cosmetic, and the rear end damage done from Pavel Borkowski, who somehow gets out of jail. That was like a days of thunder moment when you come through that big crash and you just get out the other side and the 80s music comes on. That's what happened for Pavel Borkowski. Now, watch this as they come through. Just tags the rear end of the car. And lucky to get that S14 back to the pits for some small repairs. He's got a big chance to take on James Dean very soon. So there we go, we're just going to get Adam Zalewski's car cleaned up, Dave, and off circuit. Yeah, and, uh, and another car that leaves the circuit not under its own power and also in the sky, uh, which is another uh, interesting one. I think it looks more cosmetic on that car than anything else. He got away with that one, I think. A couple of uh, bent panels, of course, all fiberglass on that car, so it obviously looks worse than it is. Um, and I think a bent uh, tow arm maybe on the front, but I think he might get away a little lighter than most. And I think some of the damage done, not even from the impact, but, but from Bukowski's car, from yeah. car, squeezing through the only gap that was there to not have a huge massive collision because if he had gone into the back of Zalewski there you can imagine the impact there would have been with both of those cars and um, if that was the case Bukowski would have come to a dead stop in Zalewski how they got away with it I do not know it's like I said before you can't really take your eyes off it just when you think it's predictable yeah. at any moment Zalewski hasn't put a foot wrong all weekend. all weekend no he hasn't sustained any damage to that car like you say he's one of the guys that have been putting in run after run very very good runs yeah okay uh, he qualified 12 normally see him higher up the, the order be the uh, 2017 and reigning Driftmasters European champion um, but not putting a foot wrong that car not sustaining any damage even looking cool calm and collected then comes out there gets it wrong gets one part of the circuit wrong and it all narrows back to when he transitioned in front of the judging tower he missed that second inner zone put him on a strange line going out to outer zone two which means he then picked up too much speed he come through the center of the circuit Oh, oh well, so, so we're hearing a report from our marshals. We're obviously talking to Adam Zalewski, saying that there may have been a D-bead or something broke on the steering. He said that it was something happened on the transition that the car just went completely out of control. He said it wasn't a driver error, of course, drivers say that, but he is a very honest kid, and he was saying something broke, something went wrong, and it just speared him straight into that tire belt. So regardless of the circuit, uh, he would have been in some shape or form off the track anywhere he was. So uh, similar to Connor Shannon earlier on, having a brake failure and going to the wall, yeah. he has an issue, and I mean, this is just getting to be survival right now. It's not even yeah. about competition, it's about survival. And right now we have got James Dean coming up against Pavel Borkowski in the top four. That's gonna be sensational. And we move it along to the other half of our top eight. We've got two more battles in our top eight to go, and they're huge as well. I yeah, mean, I mean, listen, Jakub Puskotsky to take on Torani Kavir. Kavir, for me, he's looking strong. He looks like the kind of guy, um, Pushkonski, we haven't really seen a lot of competition he driving. Hasn't been he pushed. hasn't done a whole lot yet. He hasn't been forced to the limit. And you know what, for me, I'm going to throw it all out there, Dave. I'm going to make a prediction. I'm going to say that Torani Kavir could be the guy that pushes Jakub Pushkonski out of competition. And Kavir could find himself in the final four looking for another step on that podium because he's hungry for it. He kept saying to me after round after round, I want to get back on the podium. I loved that feeling of standing on that third step, spraying that champagne, being up there and being a face of this championship. Well, can he do it? We need to find out and uh, as soon as we get the rest of this cleared up we'll find out if Jakub Puskonski can take down Torani Kavir. So, as we see, Adam Zalewski's damaged, bruised and, bruised and battered BMW E30 leave the circuit. 
our track staff just sweep up the last remnants and it does look like we are ready to get along with the next battle in our great eight and i can see the guys sitting in the tunnel dave lights on are ready for action and it will be a yeah. jakub Pushkonski in that beautiful orland gt86 to take on torani kavir this could be this could be dangerous again because kavir does not let up so as we get the last guys off circuit and we get the all clear to release the next two drivers out on to track so here we go Jakub Pushkonski 1000 horsepower GT86 2 Jay-Z under the bonnet a man with a stacked trophy cabinet from Dakar to rally yeah I think this this is one of those battles that's an unknown Ian because we haven't seen these guys go head to head before uh, Pushkonski we haven't seen much of him in the chase position uh, this event and Tuarani Kavia he's had his plenty of runs and rubs it with the wall he's smacked into a couple of guys as well and uh, he's had more experience on the track today Pushkonski is just look if you meet this guy he's so calm I mean as, if you're going across the desert you know, at 100 and something miles an hour, jumping dunes and doing the Dakar and stuff, you're not going to come here and be too intimidated by it. So he's so calm and, and he's also confident in his driving ability. So he doesn't panic too much. I don't think the occasion is going to get to him. It's just we haven't seen him tested in a door to door battle. Well, that's about to come up next. Has Pishkonski goes to the start line and now Kavia uh, is basically rolling in behind. And from my perspective right now, Kavia has the opportunity here to take down another big Polish driver and put a Norwegian guy into the top four, balancing out these nations right now. Well, let's see which way it goes. Will it be Poland? Will it be Norway? Will it be Pushkonski? Will it be Kavia? Pushkonski's always gone well at this track in previous years, Ian. He's got that experience under his belt, but Kavia's got the battle experience today and he's got the scars to prove it as he heads to the line, lights on and ready for action. And he looks confident, Ian. Yeah, he does look confident indeed. Look at the state of Kavia's car, absolutely battered and bruised. And we could just uh, see our start line marshal there. Just checking over the back of Torani Kavia's car just to make sure he's good to go. As you can see, most of the car exposed after taking it to the wall multiple times this weekend. And uh, not sure what's going on there, but uh, we can see one of our officials down there just talking to Torani Kavir. Kavir's hands in the air, Dave. Have, is there a problem with Kavir's car? They're saying that there may be a fuel leak from Kavir's car. That's what, that's what we're hearing. Oh, there wow. There may be a fuel leak from the rear end of that car. Now, we're not too sure if that is the case. Um, what, or what's happening, but uh, Kavir is saying, is there a fuel leak from the car? Uh, they're just checking underneath to see if it's an overflow pipe or it's an actual spit in the fuel tank. That's what they're checking right now uh, on the Starlight. Something they've obviously fueled the car back up again, and a little bit of low fuel coming off the track. Now it's fully fueled oh, up again. Oh, wow, and look at that. Kavir getting the signal to say that he has to make his way off circuit, Dave. Um, and that the car, I uh, just see uh, our official there, give Kavir the, the crossed hand signal, which means you're done. So, unfortunately. So, it's fuel leaking from Tori and Kavir. So, so, they're just checking that car off circuit, and you can actually see the trail of fuel. It's actually pretty heavy as they yeah. come underneath Kavir's car. And, you know, it seems quite harsh on the safety of but you can actually see the actual trail of fuel that he's leaving all the way down that tunnel. Um, and our marshals here, obviously, not going to let him run the car with a fuel leak like that. Of course, that is part of the scrutinizing end of it. Um, you can see, look at that fuel. Just well, you can see, just it was hard yeah, to I mean, see on the on the darkness of the tarmac. Yeah, exactly. And you know what? And uh, the, a lot of these guys running very, very short exhaust systems. So the exhaust system finishes at the rear axle. A flame, fuel there, not a good situation. Yeah, it's and we don't right want to see anyone get no, hurt. It's, so. coming, it's actually leaking right down on beside the exhaust. So we know what's going to happen next. Oh wow! So Kavia will bow out of the competition. And what? I mean. Pushkonski needs to do the lottery after this event because how? He, how? he has made it to the top four here with only doing one battle. And sometimes it he's happens like that. He's only done a pair of tires. Surely he's done only yeah. one pair of tires. He'll get another run now. But again, it's another one of those things where you need a little bit of luck on your side to hit this competition. You need the car to work. You need to not crash into things. You need to be sensational on twin battles. And sometimes and often you need a little bit of luck. And that's landing on Jakub Pushkonski right now as he takes to the circuit for another solo run. Yeah, Jakub Pushkonski, like you say, Dave, he's just going to put out a solo run for everybody at home watching and for you guys in attendance. 
And yes, such a shame. I was very, very looking forward to seeing Torani Kavir um, go head to head with Pushkonsky. Two guys that push 110%. And I know Kavir was looking to step back on the podium, like I said before. He was going to throw everything on the line like he has been all weekend. As Pushkonsky finishes up his solo run, we will bring up the battle graphic just to make it official as Piskonski makes his way off circuit. And there we go. Kieran, Kevin and David make it official. Jakob Piskonski will be going through to the final four here at round four in Turin in Poland. And we move it along to the final battle of our grade eight. And that will see local guy Pavel Trella take on Joe Hutanchi. Poland versus Germany, Dave. Who takes it? Put your money down the line right now. Well, I was just about to say, if you're looking for the two most unusual cars of the grid, <laughs> we pretty much have them here. You've got a Mitsubishi fronted 180SX pickup Pick truck with an LSX uh, Chevrolet engine going up against an Opel GT with a Toyota 2JZ. Yeah, figure that one out. So, yeah. I mean, these guys have spent way too long on Forza, I think, going into those computer <laughs> games to be making things like this. But they go up against each other, and they both also have been very competitive right throughout the action today. Whew. I mean, from my perspective, this is a big battle for both of them. I mean, Joe Hutunji hasn't reached the top four yet this year. Neither has Pavel Tra. So whoever wins this will have a fantastic uh, event either way and get two shots at the podium. So yeah. they know that right now. And it'll be another name. This is it. So we've seen now Jakub Pushkonski in the final four. That's another name we're going to see either on the podium or finishing in fourth place that we haven't seen all season. So completely tearing the championship apart. I mean, Trella and Joe, neither of these guys have been in the final four, like you say. So a whole new podium, except for the usual face, <laughs> potentially, yeah, of James see, Dean. Gregor Shipke into the grandstand. He's a spectator watching the action for the rest of this. And uh, he'll, uh, <laughs> yeah, he's cheering on his fellow uh, Polish driver out there on track, Pavel Trella. The Polish crowd here are behind Pavel Trella right now, who Tunji, though, has got a big point to prove right now. He's taken on his own brother and one. Now yep. he's got to take on that little Opel GT and got to stick it on the door into that first corner. He certainly has, Dave. And you know what? He comes in here with a lot of weight on his shoulders because he has been crowned the King of Europe 2017. Well, can he live up to his name? He's in Europe battling against the best of the best right now. As they come off the line, Trella to lead in Joe Hutanji. As Hutanji throws it in on the door. How did they not make contact there? And I think Hutanji did. He's had to adjust, but he's still in the game here. That was a very brave move from Joe Hutonji there, through all caution to the wind. He certainly did, David. Now he's going to try and attempt it again as Trella gets nice and close to the wall. Joe Hutonji starts to hunt down that Opel GT. Can he get back on the door? Hutonji needs to make one last ditch dive to get back into the game as Hutonji now stands on the accelerator and gets back close to Trella as they bring it across the line. Wow, exciting stuff. You know what? He got away with it because he went in way too hard. Look, he's almost over rotating on full lock there. It still just makes a little bit of Contrella makes contact with the wall also. And Joe Hutanji stays in it. That's experience right there. Do you know when Hutanji made the little uh, wobble? I think it was to avoid Trella. Trella took the rear bumper off. Did Hutanji think that Trella was going to the wall? That could be the case. Uh, if I watch that because first one again, yeah, it does seem very that, much. If you see that, look, because Trella goes back and smashes his rear bumper over the wall, um, clearing the track for us. But yeah, Trella, Tr Trella hits the wall, and Joe Hutanji, very close to him, has a wobble. Was he? Look, watch this. Look, Joe Hutanji yeah, just before gets that. out of it. Yeah, just before this, watch as they come into that first corner. Trella's way wide here. Look, Trella, in Trella the, hits the wall. Trella's in the wall. Joe Hutanji starts to slow down. Yeah, he goes on big angle almost to avoid Is Trella he trying there. to avoid I Trella? I think Trella, he thinks Trella's going in the wall and he backs out. So, oh, Ian. Oh, Dave. You know what? When you look at it on the first glance, you think Joe Tunji's made an error here. But when you slow it right down. When you down, slow it right down, you look at it again. It was only because I see uh, Trella take his rear bumper to the rear wheel and knock it over the fence. That's what caught my eye. It was like, hold on a minute. Where did Trella's bumper come from? I didn't see him hit the wall. All I was focusing on was Joe Hutanji. Yeah, look. But it doesn't slow too dramatically, no, Trella, there. but it does make a wobble. Is yeah. that trying to avoid contact? But then if Joe Hutunji is trying to avoid an incident that doesn't happen, is that his fault? Exactly. Who knows? Who knows? That's 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 where it goes to the judges. Yeah, we don't have to worry <laughs> about that. We can only speculate. But now they are ready to send them for the second half of this battle. Surely there will be more drama again here as they come off the line. Joe Hutunji, Pavel Trella. And look at Hotonji and Trella. Trella's right there with him. Leaving a little bit of room on that initiation to try and catch him up. Joe, not to the outside of that corner like he should be. But Trella now starting to reel him in. And look at the proximity as they come through those inner zones. Will Trella start to make the dive? It just does a little bit earlier. Knocks a couple of water barriers as Joe Hotonji puts the foot to the floor. And Trella now struggling to stay in the game. Cannot catch the Red Bull Drift Brothers. They come across the center section. And oh, Joe Hotonji. 
flirting with that outside wall and a phenomenal finish from the German driver. We thought it was going to go one way, now it may go the other, the beauty of drifting. Yeah, unbelievable run there for Joe Hutanchi. Do you know what, for me, I'm going to say Pavel Trilla looked uncomfortable. He was very, very shallow as they transitioned through the center of the circuit. He had a very, very shallow angle as he came into out of zone three. Didn't look like he could get on the door, just didn't look like he had the pace. Joe Hutanji, though, he threw that car on a big angle, no regard to the wall that's been taking prisoners all day. He threw it up there, got on throttle, and smoked the place out. This could go either way. Judges deliberating this one. Um, do you know what? It could be, a, could be a German in the final four, along with an Irishman and two Polishmen. Or did Pavel Trella do some, something that we didn't see? Could he have overturned it as Joe Hutanji steps out of the car to <laughs> give the crowd some appreciation for sitting out here and well, taking all this in? You know what? I've, I've seen more mouths open from the crowd all night going, what is happening here? This is insane uh, than anything else. And now the noise is starting to build in the arena as Joe Hutanji enters uh, another stage of knockout competition and up against Trella, a worthy opponent. Those guys have fun out there at the same time. Look at that lead to lead, chase to chase. Davis going down and we see uh, that uh, wobble there for Joe Hutanji. Uh, no proximity from Hutanji at this part of the circuit, but this is now where Hutanji starts to pull away and where he, in his chase, he started to gain proximity. Look at this, almost identical distance from each other. Yeah, no, look um, at it. And this is where they started. This is where Joe Hutanji gained a little bit of ground. Yeah, no, you know what? He but gained not that, a, lot not a lot in that, really, to be honest. Um, watching over the replay there, especially the side by side, great view there, by very, the way. Very, very good, yeah. Um, the guys that see it live, our, our live stream crew, uh, being able to give us those those sort of back to backs to let us know what sort of proximity these guys are dealing with. And the judges just getting that little bit more information to see if they can now decipher what's happening. Uh, and look, we can see Eli Hutanji down there watching the live feed with his uh, pit crew, trying to find out will his brother make it through? <laughs> will his brother make it through to the top four? Whatever happens, those guys are going to be partying hard because what a result for both of them, you know. Yeah, well, this I think the only thing you can do after a competition like this is have a, have a good strong drink here at the after party because you need to forget that you all the fixing you need to do on Monday <laughs> and Tuesday to these cars. But the guys are smiling, they're having a good time. And uh, I think they know the risks involved in this sport. They know the risks at this level. Um, this isn't about, you know, as I said before, it's not about Instagram and Facebook and putting up pictures of your car and doing some skids. We were doing skids 20 years ago. <laughs> when we come to this stage, there's got to be a new challenge. And this, yeah. this championship is proving that. It's a survival contest. And that's what these guys have accepted. And, and that's what we've seen these guys stand side by side and say, you know what, our cars are pretty OK. Um, and one of these guys will go home. But Germany, making it true to the top four, that's a big statement. Or Poland. At 50% in our top four positions right now. It looks like the result is coming up. So Trella and Hutonji await the decision. Here we go. Slide up left for Joe Hutonji, right for Pavel Trella. Who is going to get the win and go to the top four? David says one more time. Kevin goes for Pavel Trella. And Kieran Hines, the deciding vote. Who's going to take it? It's Pavel Trella getting the win and going through to the final four. We got to come back to the judges. That was a tough one. Yeah, that was really a really tough one. Um, I just go back to the first run. We were analyzing the replay to see if uh, Trella slowed on initiation and caused Joe to stall up. But um, from analyzing the replay and from looking at it here live, we, uh, we deemed that Trella didn't slow. And it was Joe's fault then that he stalled up. So that was a massive error. And he was at a disadvantage from the offset then. Um, he did, really didn't regain that, any proximity for the rest of the run. So for me, uh, Trella came away from that battle with a fairly sizable advantage. Uh, then you switch him around. Joe had an okay lead, but he definitely wasn't deep into the clipping points like Trella was. Definitely. And so overall, Trella takes the, takes the lead, uh, lead to lead. And then um, Trella, he didn't really have much proximity, but uh, he had similar proximity to Joe, but it really all comes down to that mistake that Joe made on the initiation in outer zone one. Therefore, Trella then wins the chase runs also. There wasn't a whole pile in it, but it was just enough to take it. Well, we heard it there from Kevin O'Connell. Here's, here's the stats right now. We have four drivers remaining, and of those, three were in the top four qualifiers. Right now, we also have a driver that hasn't completed only one battle in the top four with Jakub Pszczkonski. But the most important figure right now is that three of the top four left are Polish drivers here in Poland. One Irishman remains in James Dean. And we're going to take a small break as we remind you guys just what went down two weeks ago in Riga. And if you think this was crazy, 
then check this out. Riga. The Driftmasters European Championship touched down in the beautiful Latvian city for the most dangerous and highly anticipated event of the tour. This track takes no prisoners and only rewards the brave. Drivers knew there was no point in showing up if they weren't prepared to throw down. Before the on-track competition began, locals were treated to a sight that few could comprehend, the street parade. We're in the middle of freaking Riga. Police shut the whole place down for like a bunch of 60, 70, crazy thousand horsepower drift cars. Come on now, how much better can it get? And the weather's good as well, so it's Riga, baby. Say focus and uh, commitment definitely will win the race. This track really requires uh, uh, high concentration and a lot of commitment and then I would say balls. Welcome to Latvia and welcome to Riga and welcome to the most hardcore drift event of the year. After an insane start to the season in Płock in Poland and then a very unpredictable event in Hungary, the Driftmasters European Championship is ready to once again stake its claim that it has become the Champions League of European Drifting. on cue, unpredictable weather conditions would make the circuit even more challenging and treacherous. The best in the business would have to prove their ability and adaptability once again. It was time to hit and hope at over 90 miles an hour. And he is right there with Sebastian Fondin, not an inch between the cars. But even torrential downpours couldn't stop the knife edge action as each driver threw caution to the wind. Perfectly 
Lewandowski looking to hunt down the door. Can he? Put oh, it? wow! Alexandrovsky absolutely putting motion to the wind. Oh, and he hops over his car. Wow. Contact! Christoph Romanowski would beat defending champion Adam Zalewski for a third step on the podium, leaving us with one final battle remaining. Gregor Schipke, the winner in Hungary, had championship point leader James Dean firmly in his sights. With so much anticipation resting on this event, the final would have to be something truly special. It certainly didn't disappoint. He doesn't seem to have the pace for James Dean. Oh, oh, look out! Out of nowhere! He just comes out of nowhere! Oh! Empty out of nowhere! James Dean pushes big on Schipke! After three grueling rounds of action, record attendances and unrivaled online viewership, the Driftmasters European Championship is certainly cementing its initial claims as the Champions League of European Drifting. As we head to round four, we ask one question to every Drift fan worldwide. Can you really miss what happens next? Well, what happened next, Ian, was one of the wildest nights I can ever <laughs> remember in world drifting. Um, I thought you meant the after party. The after party is, is well needed because we're emotional right now. We've been through the works today. Um, I can only imagine what those drivers have been through on that track. Again, the whole point of this championship was to test people beyond what was normal. I mean, we've all seen so many drift championships, so many competitions at this stage. What more can you watch to get people excited, to get people talking? And this has definitely exploded the internet right now. Whether you like it or you hate it, right now <laughs> we are going to be sending two of these crazy drivers onto the track. Look, I'm going to put a big claim in here and said that Pavel Murkowski, he has looked up to James Dean ever since he's arrived in Poland to compete in this championship. He built a car as a replica of James Dean's car. So they go into this with almost the exact same machinery, same age. The one difference is Pavel Murkowski is trying to be the best. And James Dean has a big claim to being the best. Now Murkowski is going to go, right, I want James Dean. I want to beat James Dean. I think he wants to beat James Dean more than he wants to even win this event. Yeah. He wants to go out there and prove to the world that this guy can be beaten. And here's the history stats. He has beaten. He has actually beaten James Dean in a straight-up battle last year. So he's going to win there with that confidence. He's not going to win there like a lot of the guys on the grid saying, this guy can't be beat. James Dean is now feeling confident, though. He's had a couple of runs under his belt, some insane chase runs. He is now back in his zone. The machine is very much online right now. So this is going to be an intense battle. And this is what we wait for. We go through the qualifying and the practice and the top 32 and the top 16 and all the thrills and spills and all the crashes and emotions and opinions and everyone's talking about everything. But what it comes down to is this, two shots at the podium. This is what you come home with, all that hardship, with a trophy you can remember for forever. And James Dean has a lot of those trophies. It's going to be a tough man to take down. Has the higher qualifier, he'll go in first. Burkowski's going to throw it all at him on the first corner. Expect there to be contact here. burkowski has got to keep the pace. Yeah, he certainly has, Dave, you're right. And you know what, like you say, uh, Burkowski has wanted this more than, like you say, winning the event in, in itself. And right now, first place qualifier takes on fourth place qualifier. James Dean fist bumps our start line, Marshall. Two identical S14s sit on the start line, ready to go to war. Who's going to take it? Will Pavel Borkowski take down James Dean for a spot in the final? And you can see by the damage how much they wanted this all weekend. Plenty of rear end damage. Will there be more? As the star line marshal gives the orders, it's for a spot in the final. James Dean to lead it, Borkowski, and look at Borkowski already! Whoa, Borkowski's built to will, almost contact as Borkowski pushes James Dean almost into the wall. This is insane action right now as they transition into the second front clip. Borkowski straightens massively though. Is there damage on his car, Dave? I don't know. He's, Borkowski's going for it again. They're wheel to wheel, front wheel to front wheel. Burkowski's all over James Dean, taking huge risks here to stay with the four-minute drift champion. But look at James Dean. Run that outer line. That is what it's all about. The very best of European drifting on track. You think these boys can't handle it. They just shrug it off time after time. Yeah, that was unbelievable stuff. Look at this from Pavel Burkowski. Front wheel to front wheel. How does Dean stay in it? Yeah, almost contact. Pavel Burkowski uh, has to get out of it. He straightens massively. And then again, look at this. A little heavy straight in there as he comes through in a two gets back into it doesn't get into outer zone two as deep as what we'd like earlier on but look at this for proximity as they go wheel to wheel the good transition from Bokowski makes a dive on the inside then stands back into it and goes door on door as he pushes James Dean over the finish line unbelievable stuff there but errors from Bokowski in that lead position 
uh, sorry, in that chase position. Well, so we get them swapped around and back to the start line. These guys are hungry for it. Well, right now, Borkowski in that lead position. Dean knows he's had a very tough chase run there. He's got to be exceptional again. He's got to be world class again. Uh, he knows this, and you can see him. Thumbs up. He's confident. He's locked in here. Borkowski the same. He's thumbs up. There is no nerves here. I'm going to tell you straight. These are stone cold killers on the line right now. They don't care about anybody or their opinions. All they care about is that track in front of him for the next 50 seconds and teeth losing a headline. This is amazing. That's the original registration of that car on the back end. Just has a novelty value. This is James Dean's actual car that he had road registered in Ireland, and it's come a long way since then. And let's see if we can get him another trophy tonight as Murkowski now leads him in. And James Dean, just that little air through that car. It's pretty warm in here tonight. It's pretty humid, 20, high 20 degrees. Uh, very warm for, for everybody involved. It's going to be tough in those cars. They've got to get their heads back in the game, though, as it is a spot in the final up for grabs. Yeah, as we just await to see Pavel Borkowski's car get a part of the bodywork removed, and you can see him slam it into gear. You can just see that shake as that sequential gearbox locks in, and they are ready for the light, red light, and now we await the green light for go. And this is Borkowski leading Dina Dean does not waste an instant there. Launches from the line, and look how close he is on initiation. Borkowski left foot breaks Dean right there with him. Yeah, James Dean right there with him. Good proximity from Dean Bokowski now in that lead position, looking very strong as Dean rubs his front bumper along the wall of barriers. And look at James Dean now, starts to make the dive on the door. The wheel to wheel as James Dean lurches forward, showing his front bumper to Bokowski now. As they transition back, Dean makes another dive. And oh, oh contact! Wow. Between these two S14s, there's Poland and Ireland go to war here in Toronto. And James Dean makes contact, drops off a little bit. And it looks like the light has fallen out of the back of James Dean's car. There's pieces of S14 everywhere. You cannot say this is not the height of autosport or automotive entertainment right now. Look at this from James Dean. He does not let Borkowski go out. Watch the transition right here onto the door. Big angle and right there in front of the crowd putting wheel to wheel. That's a sensational driving there. Yeah, unbelievable. Look at that. The little lurch is just pushing his headlights forward just so Bukowski knows he's still there. Bam! Catches the front wheel. But Bukowski stays in. It stays nice and high. Dean on the door and across the line. Whew. How much more of this can we take, Ian? Because this is ridiculous. These guys are throwing down at an incredible rate. And we have to find a driver to go to the final. The loser will go to the third and fourth place playoff. Oh, um, I don't know. Incredible stuff. Slide him left for Pavel Borkowski. Slide him right for James Dean, who is going to go through to the final. Kieran goes for Dean. He needs one more vote, and he's there to another final. James Dean goes through to the final. One Irishman versus three Polish, and one Irishman will be in the final. They shake hands, good friends behind the scenes. Got to come back to the judges. I mean, this track, that driving, how is it possible? Yeah, absolutely fantastic chase driving from our fantastic driving in general from both drivers. James's lead run was fantastic, uh, absolutely on the qualifying line as he has been doing all day. Borkowski unfortunately just came in too hot and uh, just on initiation. We looked at the replay again to see if there was any visible slowing from James, but it didn't look like it. Borkowski just came in far too hot and made contact. Then from there on, he lost a lot of ground and uh, had to do a lot of cutting to make up a little bit of proximity then for the for the second half of the run. Um, but because of that contact, James came away with a good advantage after the after the first run. Then you switch him around. Typical James Dean chasing absolutely onto Barkowski's door all the way. Um, Barkowski did have a good lead line, but not as good as James's. Uh, but James is absolutely all over him the whole way. The only mistake that James had it was that he had a slight sm stall up just uh, before the finish line uh, at outer zone three, but it wasn't enough to overturn the advantage that he, he already had. So overall, James taking the win. So there we go. James Dean puts one step on the podium. Who's going to be the next guy to put a foot on the podium? Well, it could be Pavel Trella or Jakub Pushkonski. Jakub Pushkonski right now looking like a man who's been gifted the lottery, Dave. Yeah, but you know what? He's an unknown entity now. No one knows how to predict what he's going to do next because he hasn't had a battle. So he goes into the chase position. Two Polish drivers. One will make the final. Trella looking for redemption here as he goes for his first attempt at a final this year. But Pushkonski, he has the rub of the green this weekend and he goes right to the door of Trella. Little early initiation from Pushkonski as now he starts to make the move. 
through. Trella now, look at the speed of that little Opal GT through those inner cliffs. Pishkonski now making big dives to get on this door. Yeah, Pushkonski now starts to find the door and it's out of zone two. Oh, tags the door of that Opal GT as, as Pushkonski falls back now. He needs to get back into it. Trella fires it up into that high zone. Can Pushkonski get back on the door? He certainly can as they come across the line. Incredible. And Trella's on form now, Ian. You've got to say he is in the zone. There is nothing knocking him off that, that perfect performance right now. Incredible stuff from him. And you know what? He came so close at, at times there for me to overdoing it, getting into the wall making those errors, but right now showing exactly why he's in the top four. Pishkonski, he might have been caught a little bit by the pace of Trella there, or how fast these guys are now at this stage of the competition going through this course. He would not have known that. He's had no experience in the last two uh, sets of brackets of, of the tournament. He's going in here now in the lead position. We expect to put in a solid Trella, though. He's got the bit between his teeth now, Ian. He can see James Dean in that final. He can see his name and lights tonight. He can see the Polish audience flooding the track to congratulate him. That's what he's aiming for. That is exactly what he's aiming for, David, as they sit on the start line and nervously awaiting to put the second run in this top four battle. Well, it'll definitely be a Polishman taking it through to battle James Dean, but who's it going to be? Jakub Puszkowski now to lead in Pavel Trella. Trella being the man on form all weekend, qualifying in third. They come off the line, and Trella all over the back of that GT86 as they fire it in. Puszkowski now looking good as he gets nice and high in the back, but look at Trella. Trella How on they didn't the make door. contact. Trella had to adjust to the front brake there as they came through, and now Trella's making that last dive. Puszkowski now looking fast and smooth on the outside line. Trella's got to make a move here, oh. and he's losing ground. Yeah, look at this as Puszkowski stands on the accelerator. It looks like he's pulling away from that little Opal GT. Can Pushkonski overturn this? He had good proximity in the first half of the battle. Trella gets back on the door, but is it too much too late as they bring it home? Wow, I, again, would not like to be a judge on that one. Pushkonski, you think, oh, he's, he's, he's out, out of it. He, he yeah. hasn't got much proximity, but then he just left Trella for dead on the midsection. Trella had to make some big moves to get back into that battle. Incredible stuff for both of these guys. And the car control from Trella in the chase, he was definitely making contact. Locked all four wheels and went back on the throttle. Incredible car control from him. Uh, showing why these guys are the best of the best. And uh, you can see it. Watch Trella in the chase on the right hand side of the screen. Look, he just locks the front brakes and stays in it as they come through that first corner. And uh, Pishkonski falls back a lot. Trella's got more proximity, but this is where it starts to turn. They're both right even Stevens here. Now watch Pishkonski go, and Trella can't stay. Yeah, as you can see on the other one, Pishkonski not making as much of a move as we thought, maybe on our initial view. Um, pretty close. Pretty close. Yeah, very, very close indeed. And you can see it on the side by side. Pishkonski had a little bit more uh, proximity as uh, they come across the finish line. Very, very close battle, but it does look like the judge's decision is in. And we await for the graphic to drop on our screen. Who's going to take it through to battle James Dean for... Oh, no, judges still not decided. I, I expected this. I, I, I just watched it again through the side by side and said, I don't know, you it don't looks know. almost like a mirror image. Doesn't it look both of these runs almost the same? They come close there, then one driver all of a sudden starts to pull away. You can see Pushkonski pulls away more, but then Trella gets a little bit of proximity as they transition back again. There is, Pushkonski goes a big angle, Trella's on big angle. Oh, that's very close. That's very close, Ian. I'm not, I mean, it shows how close the competition is here. That you can barely separate these. I mean, you look at the variables involved here. The smiles between the two guys. They're like, that was pretty close. That was pretty close. Trella, though, you can see how much this means to him. He hasn't had a great season. He needs this turnaround and fortune. A trophy here would go a long way for him and his sponsors and his team. And a decision is in. Jakub Pishkonski and Pavel Trella will get a decision on this. And it's a one more time from David Callas. Will we see it go one more time? Kevin and Kieran. Kevin goes one more time. So one more time, we are going to see them go back at it again. Judges, no separating them. And to be honest, it looked like a mirror image. You just said it there, Dave. There was more or less a mirror image of ball runs. Um, for me, Trella had, uh, if you compare lead to lead and chase to chase, uh, I think Trella was slightly better on the qualifying line, so he'd probably take the, the lead line just a, just marginally. Um, but then on the chase runs, both drivers making similar mistakes, um, not getting very deep into the outer zones and making massive cuts as well to try and maintain that proximity. Some flashes of brilliance like we could see in the side-by-side -side replay, but um, unfortunately, um, it just too many mistakes really and a mirror image of boat runs uh, but like if I had to pick a, a chase driver uh, or ch a winner of the chase runs then I would probably say that Jakob very slightly took it so Trella taking the lead Jakob taking the chases so you have to see him go one more time
Well, a fair call from the judges, Ian, and uh, I think we were kind of expecting that to drop in, especially when when we saw them so close on the lead and the chase, when we saw that happen right throughout the event, I was thinking, we basically have got to find a winner, clearly. Yeah. And that wasn't a clear run for me. I think from my perspective, it was a little bit uh, too close to call. And if you're going to nitpick that much, they've survived so much today and so many battles that you've got to be fair. And I think when you put those two side-by-side -side images, which is amazing to see, Initially, I thought Pishgonski for me, but then when I watched it side by side, I'd, I'd almost over uh, complimented him when I saw the trailer run on the chase. So, a fair call in my opinion, and I'm looking forward to seeing what they do in the next one because they have to go closer, they have to go harder, they have to go even more extreme. And Dean waits for them in the final, and the loser will go up against Borkowski, which is a terrible consolation prize with the way he's driving. So, all the action still to come here in the Driftmasters European Championships. We continue on another one more time in the top four in moments' time. So we await those guys to change tires, get some fuel in the car, and come back out here. And it gives us a great opportunity to talk about the tracks that are coming up this year, Ian. Two more rounds remaining. It's been one of the craziest years of drifting in Europe. We started in Płock with a sensational final. James Dean, Connor Shanahan, brand new wealth of drivers. We, we went out there and handpicked the best over 20 national champions, over 70 drivers. They went into that crazy stadium in Poland. We saw the most incredible, we, we had emotions that night whether we've ever had drifting. Then we went to Hungary. And it was all going pretty smooth until the heavens opened, thunderstorm, and all of a sudden, the challenge was raised again. We saw Hipke and Juha Poitelaxco and James Dean go to the podium there. Then Regan. The entry speeds. We were clocking drivers at over 110 miles an hour on entry. We had a car roll onto its roof. We had more thunder showers that make it absolutely impossible to drive at that speed. Then it dried up. We got an insane final between James Dean and Hipke and Romanovsky, who was buried in the wall this way, got the trophy there. And Zalewski got fourth position. We're moving on now. And then again, it's been another very unpredictable. We haven't seen Pushkonsky or Trella or Borkowski in the top four this year. So if you talk about domination, three of the drivers in this top four haven't made it this far before. What does that say for the next rounds? Well, we go to Hockenheim, completely different circuit. It's wide open, no walls, full throttle, full speed. Then we bring it to Mandelo Park on September 23rd, where all of these drivers that are here will go to a circuit that's well known to the Irish drivers, and the Polish won't have home advantage like they have tonight. So it's going to switch up a little bit. I think those two different various layouts towards the end of the year are really going to make it interesting and make it a very tough competition to find out who wins. But tonight, if James Dean takes this, you can be pretty sure one hand is firmly on the trophy. Yeah, I mean exactly that. And do you know what? We said that there was uncertainty coming into this round of who was going to find themselves on the podium. Um, was there going to be some new faces? Yeah, I mean, listen, apart from the obvious, and you come to learn to, to accept the fact that James Dean will be on the podium. And I mean, seeing him in the wall earlier was a, was a huge surprise to not only me and you and everyone here, but everybody online who's watching um, the action here um, yeah. but yeah I mean listen to see these names uh, are, are getting close to the podium is uncertainty and again we move it along every single round there's only been one person or two people that have been stepping onto the podium we move it to Hockenheim like you say in three weeks time the 8th of September we go to Germany the home ground of the Hutanji brothers could they dominate could we see the Germans come through they know that track like the back of their hand or could we see you know the Polish drivers still well, coming through here's the interesting thing if you're, if you're keeping an eye on there's a nation Cup here, which is beyond the normal championship. It's for each nation that's in it. And right now, when we went into this round, Poland were one point behind Ireland in that nation's cup. I can guarantee you, with three Polish drivers and one Irish in the final, they are way ahead now in that cup. So the Irish are going to have to start fighting back. And of course, the final round is in Ireland. That's going to make it very interesting. It's a, it's, we've still got two insane events left to go. And I, as you said, expect the unexpected from the Driftmasters European Championship. So you can see uh, right now Trella in the pits uh, getting ready to go back out onto the circuit. His team have got fuel and tires in that car. It's been a long night for those mechanics. They've been working pretty hard to get these guys ready to rock and roll. And this is the bit where they got to push that a little bit harder. We watched the one more time before. And the last one more time I can remember is uh, Romanovsky and Shanahan and both ended up in the wall. So that <laughs> it shows that not only is the track difficult, but the conditions of pressure and no, of pushing probably too hard is probably what's costing a lot of these uh, issues tonight. And a lot of drivers saying just overdriving the car, just doing too much. And, you know, there's no forgiveness, no prisoners on this track. It's it, it's, it only home, home of the brave out here. And if you push that, you toy with it. If you get too confident, it, it quickly puts you back in your box. It certainly does. And you know what, like we said, 
said earlier on, once we've had it one more time, it's kind of like these guys have felt each other out a little bit. They know their kinks, they know their moves, they know the line, they know exactly where they're going to transition, what they're going to do. I mean, unless one of these drivers makes uh, an uncharacteristic move, which is very rarely seen, these guys are going to go even harder than what they did before. And we see a very, very similar lead and chase compared to both, across both fronts. So, I mean, listen, the only thing really to left in the bag is a little bit more proximity from these guys and a little bit more action uh, on that side of it. Could Pushkonsky take, his, uh, take himself to the final? Well, well he's been in, uh, if I'm not mistaken, he's been in the final in this event before, before previous yeah. years. He went up against James Dean in the final, so that's nothing new to him if no. that's what happens. Trella, on the other hand, he's a guy that I always find has that X factor. He can push it a little bit to the, to the unknown. Sometimes he ends up in the wall, sometimes he makes big errors, but he has the confidence to go to a place that maybe even James Dean doesn't, and that area of uncertainty, and that sometimes can work in your favor. So whichever of these guys ends up in the final, we're going to have one hell of a finish to this event. Yeah, exactly. And like we say, Torn, the championship completely open. Pushkonski there, thumbs up to the camera. Um, he's fired up and ready to go. And as you can see there, Pavel Trella, thumbs up as well for Trella as he is ready to, for action. These guys ready to send it all on the line as we see Pavel Trella now lead out Jakub Pushkonski in the first half of our one more time battle. Who's going to take it to the final? We're about to find out. Trella fires it in. Pushkonski now looking, gaining that little bit of proximity and pushing on the door. He knows he needs to be nice and close to get the win. Can he get it back? He loses a little bit of ground there. Fires it in, over, rotates it a little bit. Dave has to bow out of it. Now starts to gain it back. Yeah, he's got to go big or go home here because he's made an error and now he's got to dive for Trellis Dory's on the wrong side of the track completely for that. He's made a big error again, Pushkonski. First we've seen from him all night and Trellis on rails. Yeah, a massive mistake there for Pavel Pushkonski. Uh, sorry, Pavel. Jakub Pushkonski, sorry. Getting a little bit confused thinking about the final already and trying yeah. to think. <laughs> Well, we've got Prokofsky in, in the third and fourth place playoff. We've got Dean in the final. These two guys right now uh, have half of the job done. For me, Pishkonsky making the first couple of errors we've watched the entire event. Yeah. That shows the pressure that's on these guys now. At this concentration levels unit, you see at home on your couch watching this, you're a specialist. Your, your opinions are completely valid because you're not here and you're not driving the car. But in that car, how can you even relate? I'm sitting here looking at these guys going, what are they going through on that track right now? Incredible. Yeah, in incredible stuff. And yeah, we just see it slip ever so slightly there for Jakub Pushkonski. I mean, listen, Pavel Trello looked like he was on form and uh, stayed in it. He now sits in the chase position as Pushkonski now leads them out. They come off the line. Jakub Pushkonski now to lead out Pavel Trello as Trello now hunts down the back end of that GT86. Can he get on the door? He certainly can. And Pushkonski on the wrong line again. Yeah, but Pushkonski look at Trello. Right into it. Trello's all over him here as they come through those inner zones. Pushkonski starts to pull that gap. Trello, though, nice line staying out wide. Has to try and let off the throttle to get as much grip as he can. Pushkonski is so fast through this section. I don't know if Trello's got an answer. He's got to cut the track also to get back into this fight. And he's right there towards the end. But Pushkonski's lead running. Trello now makes an error. Oh, will we ever find a winner for this battle? Well, we can't go one more time, Dave, so somebody is going to have to take a step on the podium as, uh, yeah, Pavel Trella makes a huge error in that out of zone three. And we and the judges' heads, heads in their hands, Dave. The judges oh, just putting their heads yeah. in their hands. Just, this just don't even one. know. This is a very hard one. We're going to see a side-by-side -side replay and look at this as they both fire it in. Pretty similar as they come into this out of zone. Trella nice and high, Pushkonski not so high though on the lead. And then a big error from Pushkonski here, bam, almost over rotates, has to kind of get but out of it. But then he's getting proximity then he gets in, in yeah. from that point on where Trella's losing. And Trella's on the wrong side of the track, so is Pushkonski on the wrong side of the track. Now here's where Pushkonski makes another kind of little error, he's on the inside, so does Trella. Again, very similar and very, very difficult very to separate these guys. These guys are doing runs all night, hitting no walls, by the way, and uh, just seem to be pushing extremely, extremely hard. So we await the call as these two guys are going to have to make a call. One's going to the final, one is going to third and fourth place. As you can see, both drivers out of the car looking up at the screens, knowing that that graphic is going to flash up and send one of them to a consolation prize of a fight for the third place trophy. A very poor consolation, pri uh, consolation prize with Pavel Borkowski on such form right now. And uh, of all these four drivers, I'm, it's just that in this final, it's been a war of attrition, it's been a survivalist instinct, it's been not pushing too hard when you need to and doing the job when you need to uh, get that win. 
I'm impressed with a lot of these guys, especially from the Polish side of things tonight. This is their home venue. They knew they had to turn up, and they have. Yeah, they certainly have indeed. You know what? They, they've been getting overturned all season so far from drivers from all over Europe. And uh, yeah, like you say, Dave, uh, Poland has really come out in force this weekend and three guys in the final four. But we need to find out who is going to take it through to the final to battle James Dean. Could it be Pushkonski? This, this is one of, the, one of the very few times in Driftmasters that both drivers can understand each other in their native language having a conversation after a battle. So, but we have a result coming in. Let's see which way it goes. Who's going to the final? Who's going into the third and fourth place? Playoff, slide up left for Jakub Pushkonski, right for Pavel Trella. Who's going to take it? Kieran says Trella. And Kevin says Trella, Trella's going to the final. Ian, what a night for Pavel Trella. And Pushkowski gave it everything, but Trella's going up against Dean to find out how he's won that battle or even what was in it, because it looked very minute to us. We go back to the judges. Uh, yeah, um, with, with, with Trella in the lead, I mean, if we compare lead to lead, first of all, uh, I think Trella shades that, and he has the better lead. Um, when you compare chase to chase, uh, obviously, two very scrappy chase runs by both drivers. Um, Jakob, um, in his chase position, he makes a big mistake uh, coming out by over uh, zone two, uh, stalls up, gains back proximity, then has a massive dive coming down into uh, the touch and go. He's on the other side of the track, but the, the, you know that's kind of similar to what Paul does in the next one. But Jakob is nearly straight. He's very, very little angle when he does that. Um, so you know, Pavel takes a big advantage on the first one. Um, when we like when we swap it around and Paul's in the chase, when he has proximity, it's cleaner. It's it's he has a little bit more angle. It's it's just a cleaner chase to the point. But then of course he starts to fall away, and um, he falls away at the you know as they as they come out past outer zone two and come down into transition. Again, Pavel does a big dive there, but he's carrying a bit of angle while he does it. So it's. Uh, scrappy and it kind of evens out so we would say it was an even and the chase position and with Powell the better lead run that's how we, we, we've scored it. Well there you have it from the judges I, I'm joined by Ryan Sage. Ryan you've sort of been halfway between an ana analysis and, and sort of a spectator this weekend it's been a really tough night for a lot of these guys and it shows how much risk is on the line for these I mean it's not an easy championship there's no way anyone can watch it and say I'll give that a go it's pretty handy it's tough out there yeah no I've definitely been a fanboy this weekend no doubt about it and uh, you know I know some of the drivers familiar with them obviously I'm familiar with James but it's really been fun to watch some of these drivers go out there and battle against so many different elements in this night from the attrition with vehicles, the wall, mechanicals. And we see at the end, even guys like James Dean had to battle through challenges in practice to get to where he is. And for Trella, he's, ma he's made his way through the finals in, in a really solid way by being consistent and not getting into the wall. So we've seen different paths for both drivers. And I think the takeaway from this event is that you have to know that there's a high level of risk going on here and that it could or could not go your way. And for many guys, it didn't go their way. And those that did, they find themselves late in the competition in the finals. Yeah, I think, I think the idea behind the guys who run this championship was how do you separate 20 plus national champions? Probably the only way is to give them something they're not comfortable with. And I think that's kind of what we saw tonight. You can see guys with huge experience suffer because they got a little overconfident maybe at times, or right. again, they haven't faced challenges like this before. It's been a tough night, and I think the guys that have made it to the top four, especially the Polish guys who've come through, they have a little bit more experience maybe on the ground here, and maybe playing a little bit of a safer game, knowing what they've seen here in previous years. Maybe some of those nations coming here this weekend got bitten by unpredictability that they didn't foresee. For sure, and I think if you're a fan watching at home, the one thing to understand about being here on the ground is it's a long weekend for these guys. Lots of practice, especially for before the top 32. Anything can happen. They have a, a great support team behind them, whether it's their family and friends or the guys in the paddock wrenching on the vehicles. And of course, all these guys are actually are doing a lot of their own work as well. So this is not an easy sport by any stretch of the imagination. But through perseverance and getting uh, what needs to get done on those vehicles and the skill and the talent, they've, they've made their way to the finals. Yeah, and of course, I mean, for European drifting, this is now becoming the hotbed of talent. And for me, especially coming from where I'm from and from your end, coming from where you're on, we're, we're starting to see new guys now. And I, I'm starting to make, as I said, sometimes I'm sitting here trying to be professional, but I'm being a fanboy because I'm seeing new drivers and going, 
I like this guy. I don't know who he is. And then a couple of rounds in, you're starting to get familiar with his style. You know every time he comes out, he's going to put on a show. And at the same time, some guys that you place, you put your house on make mistakes. So it shows how open it is. I, I'm sure okay, James Dean in both your championship and the Drift Master Championship, just is in a zone. He's just feeling confident and doing very well. But it shows that he's not far ahead of the rest of the competition when you throw all those variables in. Right. I, I think that and also what I've taken away from this weekend is that this event, this series, what you guys are doing here, is emblematic of what's going on within the, the global world of drifting. And I think it says something really positive about where the state of the sport is. Uh, there's some great competitors in this field. They put on a tremendous show. The fans here came out in hordes. They had a great weekend. They stick around till the end. And, and it's just something I think overall to be proud of. Absolutely, and of course, I get excited when you see new guys start to rise through the ranks. We've seen it in so many championships across the world. It's a very exciting part when you see the, the old guard under pressure from these new oh, kids yeah. from new countries. And, you know, I think if you look at previous European championships, there's five guys that dominate that. But because those five guys are in 20 different championships, it's very hard to know. When you stack them all up against each other, there's no weak links here. And even though some people might say, hey, a lot of guys went in the wall, I'm like, you have no idea unless you're sitting here how fast that track is, how dangerous that track is, and how one mistake can cost you. And I think it's amazing to think the sport has come from can you drift yeah. to can you survive in about five years in Europe. And it's, you're not making it easy on them. You're taking them to very unique courses. You've got high-speed stuff like at Riga. You've got tighter stuff like this that's very technical. And, I, you know, I think at the end of the day, when you get to that final event and you crown that champion, you're going to be able to really say, I battled through all types of different conditions. And that'll make a standout champion. Yeah, I think we've never had someone announce at the end of a season that they are the true European champion. And right now, we have a couple of guys that still believe anything can happen over three rounds. And it looks like we're moving on to our last battle on the line. Ryan, I'm sure Ian will be getting back in touch with you very soon as I head to the podium later on. We're back up. It is going to be the third and fourth place play off between Pavel Borkowski and Jak Jakub Szkonski. And right now, where I'm sitting, this is going to be a very interesting all-Polish battle for third place on the podium. So as they warm their tires, Jakub Szkonski, who's had a phenomenal night. Uh, that car still in one piece. Borkowski, he hasn't had it so easy, in. He's had to really fight for it. This is for third step on the podium. Do any of these guys deserve to go home without a trophy? I think we need to give trophies to the whole grid this weekend. They've been through an incredible amount. And as Ryan says, it's amazing to see the talent level that is across the world now and the challenges being set. You know, if you go to Formula Drift Tracks, they are 100 mile an hour onto a bank. Here is just as difficult. Europe and America coming together under one roof. But Right now, it's all about Poland because they are looking for a guaranteed third place on the podium. They're definitely going to take two of the podium spots, but which driver will be there in third spot? Will it be Borkowski? Will it be Szkonski? They know each other's style. They're going to go out there and throw down. I cannot wait to see these guys when that light goes green. No, it's going to be one for the history books. As they come off the line, it will be Pavel Borkowski to lead in Jakub Szkonski for a third step on the podium. As they fire it in, look at Borkowski nice and high, but look at Jakub. Jakob all over the side of Borkowski's car now. They transition into that second front zone. A big straighten there, though, for Borkowski now as he starts to try and gain some lost ground. This is where he starts to make up the ground, though. His car's so fast. Once he can get the power down to the center section, he's got to make a huge dive. Big speed by Borkowski here, almost into the wall he goes. But he holds it, but Borkowski will not let him get there easy. What an all-Polish battle here in the third and fourth. And you know what? You can be very proud if you're a Polish drift fan of these guys as they constantly improve time after time. Yeah, exactly. These guys are just going hard and hard and hard. And you know what? For me, Pushkonski there really starting to feel himself in the car and feel himself in these twin battles as he's pushing on the door a lot harder than what he was earlier on. But you know what? Pavel Borkowski, he's unbelievably fast, David. And there's no now we know why this guy has been winning event after event before. Look at this for Pushkonski though, gets nice and close. Big area here for me, look, straightens massively has to use the foot brake to dial that car in. Gets back into it though, and like you said, this is where he gains up the lost ground. He does, and his car just seems to have that grip when it squats just coming out of that outer zone too. That every run, that's where he gets back into the battle and back into the fight. So from my perspective, he's looking like he's got the pace. Now the question with Borkowski is he is the most 
knife edge man on transitions. His transitions through the center section of this course all night have just been breathtaking. He's going to have to go and do that again. It's the last run of the night. Why not throw it down? I say that very loosely with the amount of damage we've seen tonight, but I think he's going to go for that trophy. He can't go through all that and go home empty-handed. Burkowski has got the chance in the chase position to take down the man who is the current rally champion in Poland. Here we go. Pushkonski into the first corner. Look at Burkowski. Yeah, Burkowski now throwing it down as Jakub gets on a nice line, transitions down the center track, but look at Burkowski. Burkowski all over the back end of that all on GTA 6. Now makes a big dive into out zone two. But look at Burkowski all over the side of Jakub. Jakub can't get away as Borkowski makes an early dive and finds himself on the inside of the circuit. Yeah, caught, caught in the smoke there, couldn't tell where he was. He makes a big error towards the end of the run and he had it in the bag up to there. But at that moment, it all fell apart halfway through the track. Oh, the judges again are going to have a very tough decision here. Had all the advantage on the first run, then it all fell apart. Transitioned very late. He left himself a late transition. Had to stay out of the smoke. He had to stay on the right-hand side of the course, which put him on that wrong line, Ian. Um, look at this, he has all the advantage here. Comes in, amazing. Close on the inner clips. Watch this transition. Boom, onto the door he goes. Right there with Pshkonski. And this is where it goes wrong. Pshkonski in the lead position. Watch, pushing through. And he goes wide and then transitions out of the smoke. Wrong place. He's on the inside of the track. He now has to slow down, come back out onto angle. And it's too hard to catch Pshkonski at that stage. So from that perspective, will that sway the battle? He had the proximity for the first half. Lost it massively towards the end. Was it the biggest error of the two runs? Or was the aggression? from Burkowski enough to carry him through to that trophy position. Very hard to tell. Yeah, very, very hard to tell indeed. And judges want to see another replay of this. You can see, look at the aggression from Burkowski at this part of the circuit. Like I say, Dave, he had it in the bag at this point and then threw it away. Look at this. Look at the proximity gains as they get nice and deep into the outer zone too. Transition back, yeah, as you say, gets onto the back bumper. Looks like he tries to make a, a Larry transition and, and a big dive, but it just doesn't pay off for Burkowski. Finds himself very low down. And look at this. At this point, Burkowski walks away with it. So it's hard to know. And again, Pushkowski finds himself outside the car with another, I don't know, decision ahead of him because, yeah. again, uh, he would not have been able to see exactly what was going on with Pushkowski in the chase position. So um, he's not going to know what happened there. Um, they're going to have a conversation on it. All smiles all around. Both guys saying, well, you know, whatever happens here, both of our cars survived. We're smiling. We're having a few drinks in about half an hour's time. <laughs> and we got to the top four, one of the toughest event. Is this the toughest event in European drift history? Would you, would you say it's the toughest event? the hardest and most difficult. I think you'd find it very hard to find another. Yeah, I, I think you'd, find, you'd struggle to find another. It's very, very, we said this yesterday in qualifying, it was very, very demanding. And I spoke to James Dean last night, the first place qualifier, had an interview with him. And before we started talking on camera, he said to me, this is this is the hardest track in the calendar because it takes 100% commitment, 100% co uh, concentration. You put everything on the line, one small mistake, and it is over for you. And that line is, it, you need to be so perfect on that lead line. Absolutely, and of course, now we will have our judges deliberate, put in the scores. It looks like they are being locked in, meaning we will have a decision for third place on the podium. Will it be Pushkonski? Will it be Burkowski? The screen goes up. Let's see. Slide him left for Pushkonski, right for Burkowski. It's for third position on the podium. At what I think is the toughest event of the year, one vote for Burkowski. Which way is it going to go? Kevin and David, let, let those scores. We don't know. Which way is it going to go? Deliberating, and there it is, Burkowski takes third position on the podium. Wow, that could have gone either way, Ian. We were in the middle ground there. We got to go back to our judges. Guys, deserving third place on the podium is Pavel Burkowski. Great driving by both drivers there, and uh, quite a close battle, actually. Uh, for Barkowski's lead run, absolutely fantastic again, as he's been doing all day. Absolutely dialed into that qualifying line. Jakob had flashes of brilliance. However, he was wavering an awful lot and making slight corrections to maintain proximity. And uh, he did have a slight straighten in, in front of us here in inner zone two. And um, he really wasn't deep into the zones and a little bit of cutting to maintain that proximity. And um, so because of those small errors, it was almost even um, after the first run. Um, then you switch him around. Jakobs, uh, unfortunately, he de didn't have a, as clean of a, a lead run as um, as Barkowski, um, definitely not as dialed into the qualifying line. Um, Barkowski, absolutely fantastic chasing uh, for the first half of the track until just after outer zone two, where um, he then makes the transition in front of us and has a massive cut of uh, the touch and go. 
Now, for the first couple of replays, we actually didn't notice this, but um, if you really look at it, Jakob had the complete wrong line in that transition. What we were asking the drivers to do is maintain a nice wide outside line, almost out to the plastic barriers, and then a nice smooth transition back onto the touch and go. However, Jakob didn't do that. He transitioned in the middle of the track and didn't give Barkowski any room to transition in front of him, which is why he actually uh, made a cut and missed the touch and go. So, therefore, we deemed that Jakob was at fault for that, and we didn't take that mistake then from Borkowski into account. So, if you uh, analyse chase to lead to lead and chase to chase, Borkowski taking an advantage over both of those and the win overall. So, third pace is decided. That moves us on to the final battle of the night, and it is Ireland versus Poland. It is James Dean versus Paweł Trella. Two runs for the top step at what I'm now calling the toughest European drift event of all time. But James Dean and Trella, they've been around the mill, they've had crashes, they've had misfortune, they've been through it all this weekend, but here they are with two shots, Ian, to take down that top step on the podium. Dean has done it at the last round. Trella, he desperately wants to be remembered as one of the best drivers on this grid. Well, here's his chance as Dean comes through the gears. Trella now cannot let him get away, and he does it. Look at Trella. He's right with Dean here. 100% trust to the lead driver as he absolutely pins it to the back bumper of Dean's teal and blue S14. They transition back and Trella is still there. Dean cannot shake the Polish driver as they come towards the centre section. Trella's right there on the back bumper. He's got to make one last dive into that last corner and he does right there with James Dean. Clinical finish from Trella. No foot wrong. Proximity. The crowd goes crazy as Poland is in the game. I mean, unbelievable stuff. I mean, James Dean lays down the most amazing lead run there and gives uh, Pavel Trella the opportunity to get nice and close on the door and gain all the proximity he needs to. And Pavel Trella sees the door open and jumps straight in there from the initiation. I mean, watch this back on the replay. Very, very good initiation from James Dean. Nice and high, gets into that outer zone. And look at Trella there, shallower angle, but you know what, he's keeping up with him. He knows he hasn't got as much pace in the car. Dean, nice transition. Trella not really putting a whole lot wrong here, not putting a foot wrong. He's on the left foot brake, gets nice and close, stays within the distance that he needed to be for the proximity. And look at this again, nice transition back. Doesn't get as close at this portion of the track, takes him the whole uh, area to get on the door. But as they but finish he's across, there. he's there. And the thing is, he hasn't made any mistakes, Trella. No. He has an advantage after that first run. That's what I'm saying. That's enough to take an advantage. He was close, no mistakes, stayed on the qualifying line. Dean exceptional in the lead run, gave him all opportunities. Now we just got to prove that James Dean is as good as he thinks he is, as he says he is, and of course the results say he is as well. He now has to just finish this with the most sensational chase run that ends up on everybody's Facebook and YouTube and everything. Here we go. Get. Take a moment, because it's about to go down. James Dean, the last run of the night. Trella to lead him in, and James Dean is right there. He's not giving him a millimeter on initiation. As James Dean stays right to the door, as they come through that last section, and look at Trella, perfect lead run. As James Dean now starts to hunt down the Polish driver. Last minute transition. How he even managed to turn the car in that space is incredible. And Dean now back on the door, doing what he does best. The machine is locked on to that last out. Oh! Wow, Trella goes huge, in the wall. A huge mistake from Pavel Trella as James Dean smokes Trella out the final turn. goes in the wall and Dean makes contact with Trella and finishes the run in a big, huge donut because he might have just survived. That's what it was all about tonight. Look at this on the replay, Dave, as we go back to it. This is unbelievable stuff from James Dean. Trella on the perfect lead line, though, and that's why he qualified in third place. Nice late transition there from James Dean. He gets into the wall. Where did it all go wrong? for Pavel Trella. How did he end up in the wall? Now, look at this. A little wobble there from both the guys. They transition perfectly to the center of the track. Trella just gets too far into the wall. Dean takes Trella into the side of his car and pushes him through the wall as James Dean... And you can see James, James Dean, Dean running, running, running across the track. He is running, sprinting across the track to Pavel Trella to see if he is okay. And Trella exits the car, throws his hands in the air. It looks like it's mostly cosmetic. But we have a decision from our judges. A decision has been made. And from my perspective, look wow, at this. James Dean and Pavel Trella. That car went in hot into that wall. Again, you got to push that hard in the final. James Dean with Trella is like, man, I gave it everything I had. I threw everything at you. He may have tried to get to even get James Dean to go to that wall. Uh, but Trella ends up with a wreck. 
not as bad as we've seen a lot of the time. And I'm going to head down to the podium, Ian. It looks like we have a decision. And finally, the dust is settling here in Toro after the most incredible night of carnage, crashes, and door-on-door -door action that I think I've ever seen in European drifting. I'll be down on the track. I'm going to leave you with my good friend, Ryan Sage. Uh, thanks, Ryan, for, for, and, you know, for being here this weekend to give yeah. us a great insight from a spectator's point of view from the other side of the pond. I'm heading down there now, Ian, and I'm going to talk to some very emotional drivers. Yeah, so as Dave Egan makes his way down, we're just going to see a quick replay for you guys watching at home. Look at this trailer, just taking it too deep into that final out zone. James Dean avoiding some serious contact there, takes the car to the door and finishes it off. And uh, yeah, look at this from an alternative angle. We can see how much force trailer took. And look at that bad, big impact from James Dean. The whole side of that car must be absolutely wrecked as trailer takes it in there. Dave Egan's gone down to the podium. I'm joined by Ryan Sage. Ryan Sage, a sensational top 32. And what a way to finish it off with yet another car in the wall. How about that? That was pretty <laughs> unbelievable. I mean, uh, you know, one of the things I've come to learn about James is you have to take it from him. Yeah. And he's not going to give it to you. He's not going to make mistakes. Absent something going wrong with his car, you have to really push against James. And I think that's what Trella did there. He knew that he had to push. He had a great chase run starting off. He had to put down a similar or better lead than James. And that's a high standard. And it looks like he just pushed a little bit too hard and went into the wallet. And James is right there and made a little bit of contact with him. And I think that's why he wanted to go make sure that he was OK. But a phenomenal final. It's, it's never something that you cheer for when somebody wrecks, but it just gives it that sensationality and knowing that both drivers are pushing more than 100%. Uh, yeah, exactly. And like you say, uh, very much rightly, you can't, you don't get gifted anything from James Dean, you know. This guy, multiple podium winner, Formula Drift, current champion. Um, yeah, and I mean, you could see it in Trella's, uh, in Trella's driving that he had to give it everything he had. And yeah, I mean, just pushing too hard into that touch and go, caught up with the tyres and took it through the wall. And I mean, what a sensational way to finish off our final uh, battle of the evening. Yeah, and I, I'm not 100% about that, but I think that may have been the first time Trella had any contact with the wall this yeah, weekend. He kept few, it pretty clean. Yeah, a few little rubs of the wall taking the rear bumper off, but for me, they're just so precision in his driving yeah. skill, you know, when he comes out, he could just knock the back bumper off, keeping it, not really uh, upset the balance of the car, not, no steering corrections, and yeah, the, the biggest mistake was when he pushed it just that little bit more to, just to try and beat the machine, so yeah. phenomenal yeah. stuff. It, it was a great final and an overall tremendous battle. I, I, there's so many things that I'm trying to digest in my mind and take away from these incredible European drivers, and uh, you know, the final definitely had a great payoff. The, the third place had a great payoff. And just everything that we saw this entire weekend from the driver preparation, what goes into them coming here, where they're driving from, everything that they need to do to be part of this championship because they want to be there at the end of the day. They, they want to say that I'm one of the best drivers in Europe. Exactly that. And you know what? Not a lot of time between events to get these car fixed. Well, you know what? It's that time to hand down to Dave Egan. He is at the podium. I just want to say th thank you so much, Ryan Sage, yeah, for joining pleasure. us thank in this you. commentary tower. It's been an absolute pleasure commentating with you this weekend and uh, your attendance here with Jim Law has been uh, very much <laughs> appreciated by all of our drift fans here in Poland especially the guys from Hoonigan as well coming over and joining you here and uh, we've got some fans here just popping up showing their appreciation so yeah I mean it's almost time to get down to Dave Egan he's out on track we're just going to get what's left of um, <laughs> our trailer's car try and make it uh, oh look look at this he's actually driving it down to the podium so not as bad as what we uh, estimated but yeah a huge thank you to you and uh, Hopefully see you again at a European event. It's absolutely been my pleasure. You guys are top notch. This is a, everything from top to the bottom is just a, the very highest level. And I think if, for the fans that may have been watching from st st top 16 on, one thing that they ha you have to keep in mind is that tomorrow this is all going to be gone yeah <laughs> yeah very much so like you say Ryan. yeah this track tomorrow is going to be uh, ripped up chucked in the bin and uh, yeah we're going to move up the road to uh, germany and put on another show where it's a completely different layout again so from everybody here at drift masters we're going to hand down to dave egan who is at the podium and i will catch you very very soon So I am down here in the middle of the arena after one of the emotional nights in European drifting, in fact the most emotional night in European drifting, definitely one we'll remember for a very long time based on how incredible the moments were. Uh, it's been just something sensational. But right now we have four drivers remaining and those four will head up onto those podium steps in a few moments. 
and every one of these guys deserves a trophy. Only three will take it. Three Polish making it through to our final. One Irishman in the final. The decisions have been made. And for me, it's been pretty incredible right through the off. Where I'm standing down here, looking up at this stadium, it's amazing to think that these guys even pulled this event off with five days of tarmac being laid on the ground, and it held up. Um, maybe some of the cars didn't, maybe some of the driving didn't, but it pushed these guys to and beyond their limits. And right now, as we prepare our podium, we are about to announce the fourth, third, second, and first here. And from my perspective, it has been incredible. So, they're just getting the last preparations on the podium, as you can see. And from our perspective, remember, we are going to Hockenheim for our second last event, which is in three weeks' time, over 100 miles an hour entries there. Then we are going to Mandelo Park on the 23rd of September for the final round with the Nations Cup up for grab, with the Championship up for grabs. It's been a sensational weekend. I want to thank all of our friends for being here from Formula Drift and from all over the world. We've had Drift fans from all over Europe as well. We want to thank you guys for making the trip to be here. It's been incredible from start to finish. So it looks like we're almost ready to go. The guys are just building up this podium. And we've got TV cameras down here. We've got four very battered and bruised cars down here. And from my perspective, it has been an sensational night. A lot of carnage, though. And as you see, it's been uh, a tough on the teams behind the scenes. And it'll be very tough on a lot of these guys who have to come back here in three weeks, not back here, but back to Germany in three weeks and get these cars back in competitive uh, action. And it's been a long season. And of course, we're testing the best of Europe here. It is the Champions League of European Drifting, the Drift Masters European Championship. We are just awaiting the last couple of adjustments on the podium before we can announce those winners. And uh, you know what? Very deserved top four. I think you'll all agree from watching in throughout the night. So we'll be live in a few months' time. We will hand out fourth, third, second, and first on the podium. We are just waiting for the last of our preparations here in the middle of a custom-built speedway circuit. Uh, it is an incredible view. I think you'll all agree at home that we don't see anything quite like this anywhere else in the world. But here at the Drift Masters European Championship, it's all about making those special moments. Sometimes they're hard, sometimes they're joy, sometimes they're not so much an enjoyable experience for every driver but what it is is proving that european drifting is at that level that the world is watching and thank you guys for tuning in all night we're almost ready to announce those uh, top four positions and those drivers look absolutely exhausted after what has been three days of just a war of attrition to get to this stage and uh, which guys will take those trophies well we're about to find out as you can see james dean and pavel Shrella finished this event with two very different machines, one completely destroyed in the final of Pavel Trella. And James Dean has hit more drivers than anybody else in the competition, but still has a car in one piece. That is uh, the situation right now. But what way did the judges see it? What happened? Well, we're about to find out. So before we go to the podium, let's see if we can get a word with some of our drivers who are on the track. And we'll just go over to James. What, probably the, we just named it the toughest European drift event there's ever been. And I think it's probably fair to say that after what went on today. I must say it's the most challenging European event I've ever taken part in uh, for a number of reasons. Um, we had problems with the car uh, after a practice run, one of our last practice runs. And, uh, so many people worked in the car to try to fix an electrical issue and 
we got it half fixed for our top 32 run. I had no dash working, no uh, nitrous working, no a lot of things not working, but we made it work. The fans weren't working, car was boiling. Crazy day. Then uh, we got the parts we needed for top 16, and I just drove as hard as I possibly could. Um, really tough day. Hard to see so many people have, you know, everyone's pushing so hard in this championship. Everyone is so hungry to, to get a win, and you have to commit with everything you have, and that's what everyone was doing tonight. People putting, you know, risking their cars, themselves, everything to try to move on to the next battle, and that just shows how crazy European drifting is, and uh, I'm, I'm, I'm just so happy to be a part of it. But I gotta say, huge thanks to the whole team that supported me this weekend, even people from different teams, because only for them. I, I was fully sure um, we weren't making top 32. We had three minutes to go, and uh, it all came together last second. Well, let's hope it's enough to get you to toss up, or will it take second position? You're on the podium one way or another, James, and we're about to find out where that podium position is. We're going to see if we can catch up with a couple of the other guys on the grid here. I can see. So, it looks like our podium is ready, and we are ready to announce the drivers who have finished in the top four positions here at round four of the Driftmasters European Championship. Taking fourth place on the podium. Will you please make some noise for Jakob Piskonski? And taking third position on the podium, you make some noise for Pavel Borkovsky! And for the final, I want to turn your attention to the big screens here in the stadium as we are about to announce the winner of round four of the Driftmasters European Championship. Slide them left for Trella, right for Dean. Who's going to win it? It's James Dean! Please give it up for a second position for Pavel Trella. And your winner, two for two in the European Championship and Championship Leader, give it up once again for the machine, James Dean! That is all from us here in this incredible stadium. Emotional times. And for me, this is one of the most incredible events. We'll never forget it. James Dean takes the win and survives. We'll see you in three weeks' time for Hockenheim. From myself, from Ian, from Ryan Sage, and all of the production team, we'd like to thank you for tuning in tonight. We're going to go to the after party. You guys can take a breath, and we'll see you at Hockenheim in three weeks' time. Thank you.